Broadcasting from their world headquarters in Texas, it's the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show. The show that discusses arcade repair, restoration, news, and more. Now, here are your hosts, Tim and Jonathan. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 79 of the Arcade Repair Tips Live Show for September 2023. My name is Jonathan Leung. I'm the producer, director, and editor here at the Arcade Repair Tips video series. And joining me remotely is Mr. Arcade Repair Tips himself, Tim Peterson. Tim, um, once again, uh, we're wondering where in the world is Tim? So, Okay. Oh, hang on a second. Um, let me unmute Tim real quick. Tim, tell everybody where you're at again here so um, everybody can hear you. Sorry about that. That's all right. This week I'm in Wichita, Kansas. There you go. So um, so how are things in Wichita? Well, you know, it's a slightly bit war uh, cooler than Texas, but not much to really make a big difference. So still about 95, 94 most days, which you've still been having 105 days, I, I hear. So, um, it's a little cooler here, but not by much. Yeah, so we have had 105 today. Now, everybody's very optimistic now that we're into September that we're going to get some cooling. I'm hoping that that is the case as well, Tim. But today, you would not know it. It still feels like August around here. Yeah, I think this has been one of the hottest months or summers on record. Uh, maybe just a couple that I can even remember in my lifetime that were any hotter in Texas. Sure. Well, we're glad that you're getting a little bit of a reprieve from the uh, from the normal heat around here. 10 degrees is still a lot, Tim, when you're looking at Fahrenheit anyway. And so we're glad that you're getting a little bit of re a reprieve. Hopefully, wherever we find you today, it is nice and cool where you are. Um, Tim, I'm hoping that everything's going to hold up. The grid here in Texas as well as everything else, and we'll be able to do this whole live show. So we're just going to pray for the best. We're going to move on forward, and hopefully we can get some questions answered this month. So um, we do want to remind everybody that if you want to interact with us during the show, you can leave your comments and questions in the live chat. So if you're here and you're watching live with us tonight, we are so glad you're here, and we hope that you will interact with us during the show. Tim, can you tilt your um, your little laptop screen a little bit down so I can see a little bit more of your face? There we we go hey look at that so i got a little bit more of tim and you guys do too so i think that'll work out well, a little bit better for everybody so um but we have a lot of people here in the live chat with us tim tonight we had delusionals arcade is here so we got robert freeman we got robbie J, and i like his comment he says arcade repair tips then football tim as we all know football is coming up yeah. tonight tonight's the start of the nfl season so that's exciting angelina's here robert freeman is here uh let's see youtube punk is here mr Dwayne 79 is here he says what's up guys uh, let's see, um, Ro uh, let's see, I already said that. I think everybody's here that's here. So, Wichita, Kansas, you can visit Mike in the new, um, arcade. The arcade of Wichita, Tim, is what Delusional says. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. I'm not, and, uh, that's a good tip. I'm writing that down. There you go. So, if you want to go, if you want to go to an arcade or a location while you're there, Tim does like to visit arcades when he travels. We've got pictures of those. If you guys have watched previous live show episodes and you have seen those. So, um, but we do want to, we do want to uh, thank everybody for joining us tonight, Tim. Oh, Nate's here too, as well, from Nova Scotia, Canada. So, we've got a, a great group of people here tonight, and we're so excited, guys, to do a show for you this evening. So, uh, Tim... Like we said, you're doing pretty well. Now, besides the weather and being in Wichita, how is everything else going? Uh, just been, uh, you know, long days, a lot of traveling still. Still got more trips coming up. I'll be headed to back to the Jersey Shore uh, to, in a couple more weeks. So, um, but, you know, it's been good. Everything seems to be going okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, well, I'm glad to hear that, Tim. Um, and, and now, hopefully, at some point, we'll be back in the same room together. Uh, I, you know, obviously, we did this kind of during uh, COVID and things, Tim. But uh, I really prefer to have you here on my left. So, but mm -hmm. you're kind of here. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So, but we're just <laughs> glad we're able to do the show this evening, and we hope that you guys are too. So we got a lot of questions this evening from people who have written in. So we're we're looking forward to answering all of those. And uh, Tim, I think we're about ready to give it a go. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay. Well, with that said, guys, let us move in to our first question of the night. And this one is from Jeff. Now, Tim, there's going to be a big theme tonight. Now, you'll notice the um, the title of this episode is Smacked On, Comma White Bolt. And so this first question is actually based on this title, or the title is based on the first question tonight from Jeff. So let's go ahead and get into that so everybody can see it real quick. 
Jeff says, hello, I just found your channel. Thank you for posting so many helpful videos. I recently picked up a Cruisin' World sit-down cabinet, not in the best shape. At least he's pretty honest about that. When I got it home, the, on it, the monitor would not turn on. I checked all the connections, and I smacked it a couple of times and got it to come on, Tim. This, this sounds like a familiar <laughs> theme here. However, yeah. it cuts out and flashes a white bolt. So that's where the white bolt part comes from, Tim. Down the center, whenever there's a shock or vibration, such as when I move the gear shift or when I press the gas. And Tim, I think we, you know, we can relate to this a lot of times. It's almost like there's a short somewhere. Curious if you had any ideas. So Tim, he was able to smack this cruising world and get it to come on, okay, and get it to work. And but it still cuts out and kind of flashes this white bolt. And Tim, um, he actually sent a video. What that clip was that you saw, the picture there in the. Um, outline was just a picture from the video but it looks like whenever he's talking about the white bulb bolt he's getting this collapse and uh, so he's okay. getting actually horizontal collapse tim is what he's getting not vertical collapse which is interesting so okay. um so basically he can smack it a couple of times it'll come on and it'll stay on for a little bit then it'll kind of flash this white bolt or it'll cut out and it'll come back on so we're having this kind of back and forth between yes i have a really great picture and over here it's just it's doing these white bolts and flashing out and stuff like that so what do you think's going on with just cruising usa here or cruising world excuse me well you know just uh Hearing his story does bring back a lot of memories when we used to go to auction and you know they would go game by game and they would plug it in if it wouldn't come on it was almost instinctively the auctioneer guy would smack it on the side and sometimes it would come on and be like see it's working and other times it's like well it's working when it was new you know and stuff like that but generally what we've determined over the years of having to smack a few ourselves but well, we know we can't continually smack our game while we're trying to play is that, that a lot of times that's indicative of a cold solder joint or just a really bad connection uh, so if we want to remove the chassis and touch up all the solder uh, points and also especially look where the power and things are coming in because it looks like as you know it doesn't take much jiggling or whatever it's kind of going in and off. It's kind of like if we sat at the lamp cord and we halfway plugged it in and every time we bumped it, sometimes it would go on, sometimes it would come off. That's kind of what's going on here. So it's losing power, it's trying to make a connection, but not always. So I would suspect either a bad connection or some cold solder joints. Now, you were right, Jonathan, when it collapses, that horizontal collapse also could be uh, something going out uh, that the solder touch up might not fix and he might need to get a new width uh, coil and kit and rebuild that part of the chassis if just touching up the solder doesn't fix it. Agreed. And Tim, when we get this horizontal collapse, um, a lot of times it's going to be in that horizontal section. So there may be, it may be the horizontal width coil having some issues. It may be that we need a horizontal width kit. It could also be the horizontal output transistor, the hot, right, Tim, that could be causing this kind Correct. of collapse. And so um, what we probably need to do is make sure that we're checking all the solder joints, especially in the horizontal areas of the chassis to make sure that they're all touched up and, and properly connected. But Tim, with all that said, let's go ahead and summarize it here with the outline. And uh, Jeff, from your description, description and video it looks like you're probably you probably have some cold cracked and or broken solder joints on your monitor chassis that are causing the issues with your picture try removing the monitor chassis from the cabinet and touching up any solder joints that look damaged or suspect the the picture seems to be collapsing horizontally like we talked about tim now people who have read our website or have heard us talk you probably know that vertical collapse is way more common right tim we see this a lot more than horizontal but that doesn't mean the horizontal collapse does not happen so um if this problem continues after you're touching up the solder here jeff then you may need to check out some things such as a horizontal width kit you may need to install that you may need to replace the horizontal width coil because sometimes that can cause things like that as well um and if you have the chassis out and and the monitor looks like it hasn't had a cap kit installed in a long time we would highly recommend doing the cap kit while you have it out as well not that that necessarily will fix the problem but we already have the chassis out and if it's been a while we should just go ahead and do it anyway that's a good idea and like i said it could also be the horizontal output transistor that's giving you issues as well make sure you touch up the solder around there and check to make sure that it's working well tim is there anything else you have here for jeff before we move on no, try those things so, Jeff, and get back with us if they don't, especially if just touching up the solder doesn't work. But remember, we're talking about that's a lot of solder points 
and literally there's so many of them that could be causing that in the hot area in the connection area even just a cap that could be have a bad connection like a filter cap or something so make sure that you're really touching up all those solder joints really good absolutely so uh jeff hopefully answers your question and good luck getting your cruising world monitor back up and running 100 percent uh tim the fact that he can hit it and it'll come back for a second and then you know it kind of goes in and out to me cold solder joint that just it just screams cold solder joint but as we said if you're yeah. going to pull the monitor chassis anyway it might be worth doing some other repairs while you're in there, such as cap kits, horizontal width kits maybe, um, and checking the horizontal width coil and the hot wire there too. So, okay, let us look and see what's going on over here in the live chat here tonight, Tim. We got uh, Joe Holt says, best t-shirts on the internet, love the MLB logo. Yeah, so I have like a Hadouken with the MLB logo here. So um, very, very um, distinctive. You know, of course, you know, it's not just MLB that does like this. What uh, The NBA logo is kind of like this too, right? Right, Tim? So, yeah, it does look like yeah, that. Yeah, so kind of the same kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's always fun to have fun shirts. We like we like video game-related shirts around here for sure. Uh, let's see. Nate Bird, speaking of shirts, are there any arcade repair tips, T-shirts for sale? So we've never sold the shirts that we have. Um, I will say that the design that we use was uh, – a, a guy named Seth actually designed our shirts for us. And he did a really good job. But I don't know. I just – I don't ever feel like we need a shirt. I don't know. I mean, I, the shirts we use are mainly for staff, and we've given them out free to people who are, you know, supporters and things like that. But we've never really, uh, never really marketed a shirt per se. We used to have a cafe, cafe press site, but that didn't really catch fire or anything. We didn't, I mean, it didn't really benefit us at all. But if you really want a shirt, Nate, maybe we can talk. Uh, you know, uh, send me your, um, send me your shirt size and. And maybe I can send you an invoice for one if you're really super interested in it. So if you guys really want an arcade repair tip shirt, maybe we can make maybe we can make something happen for you. And you can email us at questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Just put t-shirt in the subject and let me know your t-shirt size and I can get you a quote. And if you want to pay it, great. If not, <laughs> no big deal, right, Tim? Uh, no, but thank you for asking. That's a good question. Absolutely. So, I mean, you know, we're not... You know, I don't know. I We should be, I guess, more into self-promotion, Tim, I guess. But uh, it's never been like that. Who knows? That's never been our style. Yeah, really. exactly. So, but uh, yeah, if you if you would like a shirt, maybe we can make that happen. Uh, again, questions at arcaderepairtips.com. Just put t-shirt in the subject line or something, and let me know your size, and I can get you a quote back if you want it. And I can give you a picture too of what it looks like. So we've worn them on the show before. So, okay, Tim, I think we are caught up on the live chat tonight. So with that said, let us move on to Big D Retro's question for this month, Tim. And he says, "Oh, here we go." Hello guys, recently my Double Dragon started to act up on initial startup. When I power it up, the normal screen pops up, but then I get this weird image. Also, the only time I see a ROM error message is when I pull out the white interlock button from the back. Hopefully you guys can narrow down the possible issues or issue, issue or issues. Thanks as always. So Tim, um, he actually sent some pictures and these are the only two pictures that he sent. And so you'll see, I think the first image here is the weird image that he gets when it um, powers up. But he yeah. says when he pulls the white interlock button out of the back, he gets this ROM error message as well, which it's kind of hard to see here, I know, with the yellow and white background, the yellow background with the white text. Kind of hard to get an idea of what that is. But um, it's pretty obvious to me at this point that Big D Retro is probably having some board issues. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, you know, um, you know I, I know he probably wonders why it only comes up when you hit the interlock switch. And the truth to that question is I have no idea why it only comes up there. But the good thing is it does come up with a ROM error. And so, you know, we have to trust that the machine is kind of telling us that you have a bad ROM. Uh, but we at Arcade Repair Tips, we always start at power. We use the uh, simple approach that we are going to start at power and make sure, so he need, if he's got a multimeter, he needs to check his 5 and his 12 volts. Because if you're not getting correct voltage, you'll get a lot of uh, bad ROMs, bad things. If they're not getting the right amount of power to them, they're not going to work correctly. But if his voltage is correct, like we probably suspect it is, then the chip itself is probably bad. The one especially that it's telling him it is. And he can get some new chips hopefully from a place like HobbyRoms.com uh, or something, and try those, maybe that will help 
but for for sure we're always going to we're going to start with the asap approach and always start at power and check the power supply first sounds good tim so let us go ahead and go to the outline here so we can kind of summarize what you just said so anytime we went into any board or rom errors like this the first thing we're going to do is check the power supply use a multimeter to make sure your 5 volts and your 12 volts dc lines are sending the correct voltage to your board and adjust as needed if you can, try testing the voltage at the reference ROM chip if possible. That's very important, Tim, because you can have good voltage coming out of your power supply. It does not necessarily mean that you're getting good voltage to the chip that that is actually having the issue. So let's see if we can right. let's see if we can figure out if we're actually getting good voltage at the chip if we can. Now, if the power supply checks out, then you could have an issue with the actual ROM chip, like Tim mentioned. Check that the chip. Um, Check the chip that the start, startup self-test is referencing and make sure the pins are in good shape, Tim, and that's making a good connection to the board. Tim, we've seen this before where obviously cracked, cold, or broken solder joints to these chips can obviously cause issues, but we've also seen it before where you have a, um, you know, you have like a little seat for the chip and the chip goes into a little seat connector and sometimes those pins can break off in the connector, especially if the board has been jostled a little bit. So make sure that you're checking all, the, all those pins are connected to the chip and connected to the board properly and if it is a seated chip make sure that the seat is also in in good shape and that all of those pins are making a good connection as well if everything checks out then it may just be a bad rom chip and like tim mentioned you can get a replacement a lot of times burned for you at hobbyroms.com or if you have your own rom burner of course you can burn your own uh tim obviously rom images are available through um through a variety of websites that carry the rom images for things like MAME. so i mean if you want to get it that way you can or if you want to contact hobby rom to tell them which one you need they can get back to you with a chip i'm sure that is satisfactory for your board Tim, is there anything else that we want to mention to Big D Retro here before we move on? I can't think of anything, Jonathan. Just stay in touch. Let us know how, where you're at with that. Um, you know, and if it is, if it's something that you're really that not that comfortable with yourself, we can always send your board off for repair. Agreed, Tim. And we have several people that we recommend for board repair on our resources page at arcaderepairtips.com slash resources. If you go to the board repair and parts supplier um, heading under there, you will find quite a few people that you can uh, send your board off to if you need repair. And Tim, in this next question, we'll actually be mentioning one of those who specializes in a certain type of board repair. So let's go ahead and uh, go over to that real quick. So Tim, this question is from John, different John. Um, different John I think we have a couple different Johns tonight so this is not the uh, first John we'll hear from tonight but they're different Johns I promise different emails and everything so the first John question we have is about a Sega Star Wars trilogy so let me go ahead and bring that up Tim uh, he says I have a Sega Star Wars trilogy when you start the game it will show the mission screen but the gameplay section shows basically a blank screen with your score your life level etc with nothing in the background sound and everything is working I just don't have actual gameplay also, when I go to test functions, I cannot see them. I pressed the service button several times by what I saw in the manuals to get the monitor function, and it will pull up the red, green, and blue adjustment lines, but I cannot see any of the items or pages either. Very weird. Do you have any suggestions that can help me? Uh, thanks in advance, John. So, Tim, we have John here, and he's got a um, Sega Star Wars trilogy. Now, you had one of these, I believe, when you were at Chuck E. Cheese, correct? Yeah, I've worked on one one of those plenty of times. So with the description that John gave here, it sounds like we're getting a lot of like the heads up display type graphics, but we're not getting the actual gameplay graphics. So yeah. So with that in mind, what do you think's going on here with this uh, Sega Star Wars trilogy arcade? Well, first, John did a lot of steps that I would have recommended. He tried to go into the settings and he did his monitor tests and things like that. Based on what he's told us so far, it's a lot like the question we just had. Uh, we need to check the power and make sure we're getting the right amount of voltage. And then, if it is, it definitely sounds like he's got something going on with this board is a board issue, which was not uncommon for this game, even when it wasn't very old. So you're saying that these games had a lot of board issues, as far as you remember? Yeah, as far as I remember, just because they were so hot up inside, there were such big cabinets, and they weren't vented very well. Uh, I remember uh, that they, those monitor boards, and this the main board would all had a lot of issues because of the heat in there. Yeah, and Tim, you gotta remember that this is where we're starting to get that transitional period between like 
actual arcade boards and going more to like PC based boards. And so this pro right. the Sega Model 3 hardware that this is based on more resembles like what you would find in a PC than really what what it does with like an arcade board. We're kind of we're in that transitional period between the two here. And so we're kind of moving towards more of a PC based platform like we'll see in later arcade games and and has now become the standard pretty much for everything. And, and so just like you would have with like um, with like a PC, you have these separate boards, but these separate boards are um, are a little different. In fact, it's like a three board setup, if I remember correctly, right? It's a CPU board stacked yeah. on top of a ROM board stacked on top of a video board. And a lot of times when we're having a problem like this, we're looking at the video board because it sounds like the central processing is fine, where a game is actually running, it's doing what it's supposed to to, to do. The RAM is probably fine because we're getting other graphics on the screen, but it does sound like we're having a video board problem, uh, just based on what uh, John is telling us. What do you think, Tim? Right, because you know, before a lot of times when we troubleshoot games, you'll say, "Oh, it's playing blind. It must be the monitor." But not in this case. This is like you you did a great job describing that, John. That probably is the video board itself that's causing the problem because the monitor actually when he goes into test and stuff actually works so it's not necessarily the monitor in this case or all the time just because you hear it playing blind agreed tim so let's go ahead and throw up the outline here so we can talk about this a little further so it definitely sounds like a board issue tim and just from what john is describing here with that said Again, always a good idea to start at power, guys. Let's make sure that board is getting the correct voltage. If the voltage is good, but the symptoms continue, then it probably is a board problem. Uh, now, this is um, Joe in the live chat here, Tim, mentioned, is this the Vector game or is this the newer one? And this is the newer one, Tim, that we're talking about here, the Star Wars Trilogy Arcade. Um, many people remember it for its very unique joystick and button trigger combination. Um, not like the yoke, what we have with the Vector one, right, Tim? Right, and uh, we say newer one. You know, it's pretty old itself, but that's not the vector yeah. game. Is this um, early... sit down versions? But we've seen the bigger versions too. One of my favorite Star Wars games, though. Yeah, I want to say that this is either early two thousands or late nineties. Uh, maybe early two thousands. Probably more early two thousands, right? Yeah, you always remember fighting Darth Vader with the sword, you know, and it's kind of kind of reminded me of uh, Dragon Slayer. You kind of had to move. Or something, you know, right at the right time when he was swinging his lightsaber at you. Agreed, Tim. So, uh, yeah, it's a really cool game. If you haven't played it, we highly recommend it. It's really, uh, it's just fun. I love it, like Tim mentioned. we got to, uh, Tim got to play it a lot because he had one at uh, Chuck E. Cheese. So. But Star Wars Trilogy uses a model, Sega Model 3 Step 2 board set that consists of the three board stack that we talked about, a CPU board, a ROM board, and a video board. Now, based on your description, it sounds like there may be a problem with that video board. So, Sega games are known for their numerous connections, right, Tim? Yeah. And so you want to make sure that all connections between that board and all the rest of the boards are good. You want to make sure that if there's any wiring harnesses that they're all connected properly because, man, it doesn't take much for these games to, um, to uh, for one of those connections to go bad and then throw off everything, right, Tim? Agreed. Yeah, so you just make sure that all the connections between the boards are good and the connections between the board set and the cabinet are good as well. And if you need, if you can't figure it out past all the connections and everything, you may just need to send this off for repair. Uh, we do re recommend Ken at iRepairSega.com, Tim. He does a really good job on this specific hardware and actually says that this is one of the games that he's very familiar with working on. So if you need good. someone to send it off to, we do recommend Ken at iRepairSega.com, John, so if you want to send it off. But we do encourage you to check Power Supply, check all of your connections first because I want to say that um, I've seen this problem before and it was a connection issue one time so um, it may just be something that you need just a connection issue that you need to address and so you know double check all that stuff out before reaching out to uh, iRepairSega.com but um, but yeah I mean other than that though if you check all the connections power supply everything checks out and you're still having problems send it off to Ken let him deal with it he'll give you a quote on how much it'll cost to get it repaired so uh, anything else here for John Tim before we move on no, let's keep going. <laughs> Sounds good. So, John, hopefully answers your question, and good luck getting that Star Wars trilogy game back up and running. Like Tim mentioned, one of our favorites for sure. Okay, Tim, I we have a question in the live chat from Knights of Old. He says, any tips on troubleshooting Neo Geo multi-slot sound issues? Sometimes speakers sound blown and not respecting stereo sounds based on character location. So, like in Samurai Showdown 2. Uh... 
if I remember correctly, a lot of Neo Geo boards do have a sound amplifier in them, so you do want to look for the sound amplifier first to make sure that it is function functioning properly. Um, and there's also, if I remember correctly, there is a... Um, if you trace the sound wires back to where they go, where the sound connections are on the board, you will find sometimes they have the sound amplifier broken out, Tim, on its separate board. Sometimes they're using the sound amplifier on the main board, so make sure that you're tracing that back all the way there. Um, if it's not respecting the stereo and video, you do need to make sure that you have both of them hooked up properly because that's important. So if you're not getting like, uh, you know, right sided stuff out of the right side, left sided stuff out of the left side, make sure that those wires are making a good connection from the board to the speakers, of course. Um, but I mean, it could actually be a board issue as well. And so you may, I mean, it may be something that you have to have the board looked at in order to work properly. Tim, any more tips uh, yeah. for Knights of Old here on I'd the Neo I'd be curious Geo? if it, since he's in the live chat, you know, does, it doesn't matter what slot you have that game in or, you know, each individual slot can make a difference. It could, or doesn't matter which game. So, you know, shuffling those things around to at least eliminate okay it's not any of my cartridges or it's not any of these slots um, then I definitely say what you said you know it seems like we've all that that's not that uncommon with those games I don't know what it is about them but we've seemed like we fixed a lot of sound issues back in the day with those those little amp boards like you said a lot of times they were separate and they'd be attached on the uh, back where the service and the test buttons were. I've seen them behind there on the wall, just weird places. And so, or way up in the top, I can I can think of that too, you know, where not necessarily right by your board where you think they would be. So just check into that. And if we can help you further, uh, just let us know. Absolutely, Tim. And yeah, I love the idea of changing out the slots on the boards because that'll tell us um, like, let's say that we're getting stereo sound out of one, but we're not out of the other. It could be the cartridge, could be the slot, um, but you can kind of narrow down if it's a problem with a cartridge or a slot, or if it's a problem with the main board. That would be that would be the idea of switching the slots, right? Yes. So there you go. So that should at least give you somewhere to start, Knights of Old. If you have anything else, so please let us know. And keep us updated if you want to, and let us know what you discover once you've done some slot switching and checking some amplification stuff and all that good stuff. So. Okay, Tim, I told you we'd have multiple Johns, so here's another John, a different John, about a different problem. And so let me th go ahead and throw it up here, Tim, and we'll discuss it. Uh, this John says, Hello, I'm trying to get a couple of games going that me and my dad got before he passed away. I'm having an issue with a world-class bowling deluxe arcade. It powers up and runs and plays, but the graphics are glitched. I've included an example of the screen. I'm hoping it's not a problem with the board. Any help or guidance is appreciated. Thanks. John. So, Tim, um, we got the pictures here from John, and hey, I want to say right up, up front here, Tim, bravo and props to all you guys who sent in video and pictures this month, because golly, I feel like we get a lot of problems where we don't get that stuff, yeah. and it seems like all a lot of you guys sent in the pictures this month. Thank you so much, because that gives us a much better starting point with which to go forward with than if we're just kind of guessing by your description what we're seeing on the screen. So, thank you guys who sent in questions this month for sending the sending the pictures it is highly appreciated now tim before i take this down you will notice that you'll notice all of the scramble screen that he's getting on this world-class bowling deluxe i mean some of the screens are completely scrambled yeah it looks like it, it looks like um when he's bowling the bowling alley is okay but the rest of the graphics are all garbled and then in the test mode it looks like his text is 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 very unreadable i know that you guys don't have a really great uh, picture of it in in the live show but even looking at it at high resolution it looks like this text is very blurry and um tim just based on these pictures definitely does not look like a monitor issue right no i don't think so um and first of all john we want to say uh, to this john uh condolences on hearing that your father passed away but what a what a cool guy he must have been to help you get a game and and i can see um it's neat to have that legacy or that time with your dad and that memory so we want to help you get that game fixed uh i'm sure it's something that brings a good memory back and so but you know you said you didn't you hoped it wasn't a board issue but this unfortunately looks like a like the poster child of a board issue if you want to say it that way it's almost uh, always again like we've mentioned before kind of a theme in the show like you said earlier john is want to check the voltages and stuff but the fact that and that was a great picture there i'm glad that he sent that one in 
Because if you just sent the first one, you could say, oh, well, maybe your monitor's out of sync and you need this. But the second one really tells the tale, doesn't it? The fact mm -hmm. that you can see the lane, but then not the top of the screen. On the other one, you can't see anything. Well, those really are telling some telltale signs that it probably is some kind of board issue or video RAM or something. Agreed, Tim. And I mean that. Yeah, with the when we see the bowling lane all intact and all the graphics around it are garbled. Yeah. I mean, obviously, a monitor issue doesn't do that. Right. Uh, that's going to almost always be a board issue. So let's go ahead and throw this up here, Tim, so we can talk about it real quick. So unfortunately, John, I know you said you were hoping it's not a board issue, but it looks exactly like a board issue. So your pictures show a lot of graphics corruption that almost always indicates problems with the game board. Again, check your power supply with the multi meter. Make sure your voltage is correct. And Tim, we always want to say inspecting an arcade board is a great uh, video that we have, Tim, that talks about some steps you can take that might help as far as checking chips and, and um, just doing an inspection of the board, seeing if everything is properly connected. Now, from your pictures, we're guessing it's a video processing issue. Because we're getting it in some places, but we're not getting it in other places. And so, like a lot of times, um, that would lead us to think more video RAM issue. Because it's like maybe the video RAM is not able to load up some things because some of those chips are not working properly, but other things are loading okay in that memory. So, um, we would recommend checking out the video RAM, seeing if seeing how it is uh, doing, make sure it's working properly, and if not, maybe replacing it. It does look like you had access to the test menu, even though the text was blurry, running the self-test may be may be enough for the system test you may be able to get at least a little bit of an idea of something else that might be wrong i know the text will be a little blurry on that tim while the text was blurry it did look like you had actually navigated right yes and so with that in mind we would go ahead the very last option on that menu is a system test we go ahead and run those system tests and just see if it gives you any kind of feedback as to what may be wrong with your board uh, obviously, we know that engineers and, and software designers and developers put these things into the board so that we can help so that so they can help us troubleshoot them and so with that system test we may be able to find out if it's more than just a ram issue or if it's something else entirely so um tim anything else here for john uh before we move on no i don't think so good luck john and again we're sorry to hear about your passing of your father our thoughts and prayers are with you through that time period i lost my dad so i know what that's like and uh but what a cool guy to help you get a game like that so good luck we'll We'll help more. Uh, if you have more issues, just contact us, okay? So we want to get that game up and going. Yeah, Tim, I mean, it's just heartbreaking here to hear uh, John's story. But, you know, I mean, you know, we talked about, we always talk about Tim games bringing us together. And it sounds like that was the case with John and his dad. The fact that they got these kind of, you know, before he passed away means they were both kind of invested in these games. And so uh, we totally get that and we totally understand that. And we know that you're going through some hurt and some pain. And so uh, we're sorry to hear about that, but we do hope that you can get those games up and running. So, you know, maybe once you get them up and running, you play them for a little bit, uh, it'll bring back some good memories uh, with you and your dad. So. Okay, Tim, I'm going to go over and check with the live chat real quick before we move on. Uh, let's see what we have here. Oh, we've had quite a bit here. Let's see. Um, it looks like Knights of Old says that that Neo Geo was a six slot and a four slot cab, Tim. Okay. So he had he had a six slot in there, which um, the six slot slot is really nice. It's a it's I mean obviously if you can get that that's that makes your job easy. You just put six six cartridges in there. You have a lot of different stuff to play. So um, let's see. Yeah, and uh, Cybermine Arcade looks like he's talking about some Atomus Wave stuff, which is really nice. Uh, let's see. Jumping General, my dra my Double Dragon plays perfect in its new JAMA harness cabinet. I plug in my known working Ultra Beast PCB with Sega adapter, and the game won't get past the opening intro. Uh, red tint and lettering. Okay, it's an all original cabinet, then it should be wired correctly. Is there a stereo output on the PCB? For, oh, oh, this is oh, hang on. That's for Nate. Excuse me, Tim. So that's jumping general. So he has a double dragon, plays perfect. has got a JAMA harness, but when he plugs in his altered beast with the JAMA adapter, it's not. It won't get past the opening intro screen. He says he gets a red tint and lettering. So what do you think's going on there that would cause his altered beast not to work, even though the um, even though the double dragon seems to work fine? Well, you know, um, that's where. We really got to check again the power at the board itself because once you start adding a JAMA adapter and stuff in there, sometimes you have to tweak that up a little bit higher or 
then check the wiring just because, you know, you got a jam adapter, make sure that they actually wired it up correctly. Uh, I have seen, you know, everybody makes mistakes. Uh, hopefully not, and hopefully they tested it good, but I would double check the wiring there. And then, of course, then we're down to another board issue, uh, kind of a theme tonight, if not. Right, and, I, you know, Tim, I would almost be willing, though, to bet more on the adapter. So yeah. um, we talk about JAMA a lot, and JAMA is a standard, but as we know, JAMA is not always, all JAMAs are not created equal, Tim, it seems like. And so right. um, some people, uh, for example, we know that the 60 in one board only runs off plus 5 volts, so a lot of times if somebody wires that cab ca uh, a JAMA cabinet for a 60 in one, they'll only hook up the, f the plus 5 volts, they won't bother hooking up the rest of it. Well, if that's the case, you put another board in there that uses tw 12 volts, negative 5 volts, or something like that, and then all of a sudden it's not working properly, because they didn't do it prop they, they didn't... Uh, wire the rest of those things uh to the jamma harness so i mean if that's the case you need to just double check and make sure that the jamma that the jamma adapter is is actually pinning out everything and what you can do is you can hook up the jamma adapter without the board without the altered beast board and just make sure that that matches that the pins match what they're supposed to on the um, ultra beast pin out so make sure you're getting the voltage in the right places like tim mentioned you may need to tweak your power supply up just a hair with adapters sometimes because they'll pull a they'll draw a little bit more power um out of a out of a out of a power supply than what you normally have with just a standard board and so you may need to tweak that power supply up just a hair but we would recommend just checking the adapter by itself making sure that those pins are matching where they're supposed to when they connect to the altered beast board tim anything else here i can't think of anything sounds good so uh and that was for jumping general hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea where to start like i say you may try just plugging up the adapter without the altered beast board and just making sure that all of the pins match and that you're getting good voltage from the other side of that adapter as well so let's see. Okay, I think we're caught up. Um, there's some good discussion here between Cybermine Arcade, Knights of Old, and Nate Berg. Tim, I don't really want to get into that because it sounds like they're kind of working through it. Um, but there's some really good uh, conversations there. So if you guys are actually here watching live and you want to read some of that in the live chat, it has to do with Neo Geo, Thomas Wave Systems, and some other things like that. So it's good stuff. So I don't want to get into that because it sounds like they're kind of getting their... Um, their stuff kind of worked out among themselves, which is another thing we like to see, Tim. We, li we love it when um, when people are helping people in our community as well, right? Exactly. So uh, so that's a great thing, too. So we'll let you guys work it out over there in the live chat. And we're going to move on to our next question from John. Here we go here, Tim. Now, this is a third John. Different John. Okay. Okay, so John, we had sorry. one, two. This is first, second, and third John, Tim. <laughs> so we got all three of them here tonight. And this John says, I love your show. Longtime listener, I have a Miss Pac-Man upright with a Geo7 monitor. It has a wave on the picture. Can you please point me in a couple of directions to try? I reseed the connectors, cleaned the edge connector, and adjusted pots. Picture is sharp, but it has this roll. Um, you have no idea how much your response would mean to me thank you for your time and consideration chris oh this is from chris sorry chris i just i i went through john uh so many times i think i just copied the slide tim so this one's from chris <laughs> sorry chris so um tim we have chris here now the wave that he's getting typically when we think wave we'd be thinking humbar yes okay but if you look at the way that this looks this does not look like humbar do you no, see that it's kind of different yeah. it really has a a different type of wave <laughs> right and this now he sent a video tim i just captured a still from that video but you will notice here tim that we're getting that little graphical glitching that you see there um is waving through the picture it, it goes through just like a humbar wave would except that it doesn't affect the text so the ready the high score at the top all that stuff is untouched it's just really uh -huh. the maze and the other graphics that we see that are really um that are really giving us the issues here and so, uh, with that, with that, in, with that in mind here, Tim, it's normally we would say, oh, we need to do a humbar fix, right? Like if I right. hear wave, I'm thinking hum, humbar fix. This does not look like humbar fix to me. What do you think? Yeah, I agree, John. And uh, you know, it's funny. The first time I ever, we, the first Pac-Man we ever had, of course, had a humbar in it, and everybody called it kind of a wave. And I remember thinking that Bob Roberts had. Uh, recommended replacing the fuse holder and I thought what's that gonna do and watching that fix that I thought was just kind of crazy uh, but now looking knowing what we know and stuff what we've researched this is a little bit different issue and, and you I think you pinpointed it by saying it, it doesn't affect your text you know the whole thing doesn't scroll it kind of scrolls over that 
that is really strange. I would be my question to them would be, you know, is it the original power supply? You might try a switcher to see if that helps. Uh, could be the clock or the VRAM addresser and stuff. But man, um, this one is kind of a challenge to be honest with you. Um, you know, I would check my pins, the edge connector, make sure everything's in good shape. But realistically, I'm wondering if something is going on. It's getting a wave of weird. Um, power, AC power, or something like that. Probably where I would start with this is to install a switcher in. Sounds good, Tim. Now, um, he says he cleaned the edge connector, but Tim, just because you have a clean edge, edge connector does not mean that it's working properly. As we know, the original power supplies from Ms. Pac-Man's um, would, would fluctuate a lot and would cause burn marks actually on the edge connectors. And so sometimes you'd get that, and, and while the edge connector may look clean, it would actually not be making the connection to the board. So, I mean, you could have a clean, quote-unquote, edge connector, but you may not still be making a good connection to the board, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so, with that said, I still think edge connection is probably a good a good place to uh, check as well, again. And when you check it this time, instead of checking to make sure it's clean, we probably check to make sure that the voltage is getting through there. So check the opposite side of the edge connector pins to make sure, trace where they go, make sure those voltages are getting to the correct place. Uh, Tim, let's go ahead though and go to the outline scene so we can talk about this a little bit longer. And um, at first glance, it would seem that the, to be a monitor issue, Tim, because of the way it's kind of given this, uh, this wave like we talked about. After looking at it a bit closer, we notice that the wave does not affect the ready text or the high score text, and we're leaning more towards a board issue. Now, again, first off, check that edge connector. Make sure it's connecting to the board sufficiently. This is very important. Miss Pac-Man always have problems with edge connectors. Pac-Man in general, Tim, um, always have these edge connector issues. So let's make sure that that edge connector is not only properly connected and that we're getting a good connection, but that we're getting all those connections made to the opposite side to the board, for, to the places where they're supposed to be on the board. Now check that all of the pins on the edge connector are in good shape, of course. Um, and Tim, you know, obviously we've added a little bit of solder sometimes to those pins in order to in order to fix some of the um, the scorching that sometimes happens when we get power supply voltages and things like that, right? Correct. So you may need to do that. Um, but you also want to check that the grounding straps are properly grounded, Tim. It could still be an interference issue, okay? It's and we all have seen those really wide ground straps that run all over Miss Pac-Man cabs, Tim. Anybody who's up and one up knows what I'm talking about. In fact, I think we talked about it in a previous live show. But you want to make sure that all of those grounding straps are going to the right places and that the things that are grounded should be grounded, okay? Because if you're not getting good grounding, you may have weird issues like this. It's very possible, so. Now, Tim said if it's the original power supply, you may try switching it out with the switching power supply just to see if it helps. Even if it's a temporary solution, Tim, that may be a good thing to try. Um, and Tim also mentioned could be a clock issue because of the way that it pulses like that, Tim. It could be something with the 6 megahertz clock to where it seems to, it seems to happen like clockwork. So if the clock is messing up and not refreshing the screen at the right refresh rate or if there's a different problem in there, it could be that could be the VRAM addresser, Tim, that's having some problems because, again, it could be a RAM issue with the way it's loading the screen, loading the maze as it's doing those clocks. It could be that the RAM is, is one of the RAMs is corrupt and it's giving us this weird, uh, this weird um, kind of corruption as the clock is going by. And so it could be RAM in general. So, I mean, I, I'd check VRAM addresser RAM on the board and I would also make sure that the 6 megahertz clock was operating properly on the board. Okay, and I, I know that's all kind of techno jargon a little bit here, Tim, but it really just means it really just means um, you could hook up a logic probe and just kind of see if you're getting those pulses the way you're supposed to be getting them, right, Tim? Yep. I mean, I mean, there's not a whole lot more beyond that. And the RAM, if you just want to replace the RAM and the VRAM addresser, that may be, help you as well. Again, switching power supply may be the way to go as well. Uh, Tim, is there anything else so that you can think of just off the top of your head that may cause John or Chris's issue here? No, I really can't. I mean, it's, um, no, I think we pretty much have given him, there's, it could be a, it could be one thing, it could actually be a multitude of things. Uh, but I'm curious, and even myself, you know, what is causing this? Uh, we've, so, we've seen a lot of Pac-Man issues. Yeah. And I don't think we've seen this one. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what's kind of scratching my brain a little bit is that, uh, I've seen definitely seen Humbard, seen graphics issues and stuff. So we know enough to know when we don't know, John. Sometimes we have to be honest, right? So I would really curious to know if he's fixed it yet, 
what it ends up being so that we can uh, document that or keep up with in case that happens again. Agreed. So, Chris, if you do if you do figure out what's going on with this, please let us know so we can uh, so we can also document that because I think a lot of people would be interested in what the solution is for this one. Um, you know, and if I mean if it is a board issue, again, you can always ship it off to somebody for repair. We have all of our board repair guys on our website. You know, Tim, we used to send a lot of the classic boards like this to Electron Forge, so those guys were really good with these kind of issues. And so maybe he would be one to get in touch with, um, or you know, our friend Raymond, of course, has fixed who knows how many Miss Pac Man boards. And so there's a lot of people. Out there who fix these but like i said tim we've seen a lot of pac-man miss pac-man issues and i don't think we've ever seen anything specifically like this so it's very well, interesting it could, be, it could be more common than we know uh but just not a not, not something we've run across very often so be interesting to hear back from them so please let us know agreed so chris um, at least we gave you some ideas of where to start. Hopefully you can check those areas and see if it see if it gets any better for your problem. And and like I said, if you try some of those things and something works, please let us know. And if it doesn't, um, like I said, you may want to contact one of our board repair guys and see if they have an idea. Because Tim, Pac-Man boards are pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to them. And so um, that's why they're pretty easy to troubleshoot. Plus there were so many of them that we've almost seen, I feel like we've seen any, every problem under the sun when it comes to, when it comes to uh, Pac-Man issues. And then all of a sudden we get a new one, right? Yep, that's that's how this business works, but there fortunately is a lot of documentation, and like I said, some stuff we could have overlooked before because we never run across that issue. Exactly. So, Chris, again, just keep us posted. Uh, give us any updates that you may have. Hopefully, we gave you some good places to start on it, and if you figure out what's, uh, what's going on with it or if you need additional help, uh, please email us and let us know. We'll try to help you out further. So. Well, Tim, we're actually to the point of the show where we do the quick question and answers. But before we do that, we do have a couple of questions here that we got. Uh, Knights of Old says, my original Stargate up and down joysticks are super noisy. Any idea what can make them quieter? So that's his first question. So his uh, Stargate up and down. We all know the little joystick only goes up and down yeah. Tim, on Stargate. He says it's noisy. So I don't know if there's like <laughs> a big like grinding or shift or what the thing is. But um, is there anything he can do maybe to kill a little bit of that noise in there? Well, sometimes, you know, I, I kind of, I probably can guess the noise. I can hear it almost. Um, you know, these things, anytime water or any kind of liquids or something get in there, the best thing to do is to take the joystick out and take it apart and clean it really good. And sometimes old stuff will fall out there, may need parts rebuilt. Um, in a temporary quick fix, you could put some three-in-one oil or something up in there and see if that doesn't take care of a little bit of the noise but probably the really best fix would be to take it all the way apart and take the joystick apart and clean each individual part um, and maybe a little grease or oil up in there wouldn't hurt uh, but that'd be what I'd recommend and Timmy uh, Knights of All has a second question here. A couple of my cabinets have no power switch. Is it damaging? Uh, is it damaging to turn it off and on with the plug just by unplugging it and plugging it back in? You know, I don't know how technically damaging it is, but it is. It does seem to do some damage. Um, you know, in the, what you could do is attach them to instead of if you don't want to. Yeah, I like. Me and you are big fans of on-off buttons. Um, there's a reason your TV has it. There's a reason most stuff has it. Um, it just, you know, most stuff doesn't come on automatically when you plug it in. Although a lot of items do. Uh, it's a safety issue to me a little bit. But having said that, I would say that uh, he could just plug it into a power strip surge protector and use that as his on-off button if he wants to. Not only will that help protect it in case you get a power surge or a lightning strike or something like that, it does give it that little less jolt, jolt when it's going to come on. And I just think it's better. I, like I said, I can't scientifically maybe prove it, Jonathan, but it, it's just, you know, we know that one thing about a car, it's the hardest thing on them is the initial starts and stuff. And games and any kind of electronics are the same way. So the more you can ease that into a little easier. So I would just recommend getting a power strip unless he wants to install an on-off switch, which we highly recommend. Uh, in fact, any game that uh, we have, 
we've done that plenty of times. We've started off by installing an on-off switch just because I think it's safer. It seems like they all seem to respond better to that than just plugging them in and plugging them out. It's also bad on your plug and your wall. Agreed, Tim. Yeah, and so, I mean, if you have a power switch, that's great. I don't think there's any damage necessarily that's done by unplugging and plugging a game in from the wall, but it, it is way more convenient for you to be able to turn them off. Uh, plus, like you said, damage to the plug of plugging in and taking out and your plug's laying on the ground, somebody steps on it, damages it that way. There's a lot of different things that can happen when you're doing it at the plug level versus the switch level. So, I mean, it's just up to you, but as far as damage to the game, don't really think it, it does a whole lot. Um, you know, you may get a little surge if you, like, unplug it and plug it back in real quick accidentally, like when you're trying to get it loose, and so there's, there, there's always opportunities there where you may get a little bit more of a surge. So, we still encourage power switches in games, but if you don't have one, a uh, game should operate fine just unplugging and plugging in from the wall so uh let's see oh russell just donated twenty dollars tim so wow. um, yeah russell gibson thank you so much for uh, your donation we appreciate it so much that means so much to us uh tim uh you know we try our best here to to help out everybody we can and whenever we see a donation like that i know it gets you and me just really pumped because it just gives us you know validation and that what we're doing means something right tim good thank you russell that was very kind of you Absolutely. So thank you, Russell, for that. We highly appreciate it. If any of the rest of you would like to donate as well, if you're watching this live, you can hit the little dollar sign in the live chat. That's our super chat button, and you can donate there. You can also go to arcaderepairtips.com slash donate if you would like to donate something, and you can do that anytime if you're watching live or if you're watching uh, after the fact. You can go to arcaderepairtips.com slash donate and donate to us. We highly appreciate all donations. Uh, like I said, we don't make really any money doing this. It's enough for me and Tim to get a meal for every live show, which is nice. Um, but lately, I haven't even been able to splurge on Tim because he hasn't been here. So, um, you know, there you I go. Know, so, I don't have any chicken wings. I'm actually starving. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's like, man, you, you've been start. saving me like, uh, what, $30 <laughs> per live show, man. We've got a whole like 60 bucks in there now. We're rich. So, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we really don't make a lot, guys. Obviously, we have ads on the videos and stuff. But, I mean, it doesn't make anything. You know, I mean, that, that stuff basically breaks even when you figure in all the web costs and all the other stuff that we do. So, I mean, you know, it, it basically just goes to buy me and Tim a nice meal. So, thank you for your donation. Me and Tim will will uh, will buy some chicken wings from this live show. Hopefully, Tim will be here to enjoy them with me. So, well, so. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, Robbie J, the sound on my Donkey Kong is cutting on and off. Sound will cut off and then bang, and then I'll bang the cab and it'll come back on. What do you guys think? Well, kind of exactly what we talked about earlier. Um, the Donkey Kong probably has the Nintendo Easy Monitor, and that is your sound is part of your monitor, kind of. So there's some connections there that you can try, but by all means, track those solder joints on the back of that little soundboard. Yeah, it's got a little audio board in it. Yeah. And, um, you know, if. If you just touch up the solder on it, you may be able to get it working. But if you've never installed the audio kit that they make for it, the little audio re repair kit, just get the audio repair kit and put that on there. Like, if you haven't ever done that, just do it. So you're going to yeah. take the board out anyway to fix all the solder joints. Go ahead and, and do the repair while you're in there. So, And you can get those kits from you know pretty much anybody, I think, Tim. Uh, Mike's Arcade, I'm pretty sure, has them. They always carry yeah, all the Nintendo stuff. Yeah, that's my first thought. So. There you go. Uh, let's see. Nice the old on that joystick on um, the Stargate says it's really squeaky. So real yeah. squeaky when it's coming through. And I think I've, we've, yeah. we've seen that on Defenders as well, right? It probably just got a little liquid, even moisture, humidity. Over time, some of those parts are going to, oh, you know, ha even dirt, you know, can cause stuff like that. So just get in there and clean it out, blow it out real good. Like I said, you could try a little 3 and one oil. Uh, WD-40 is, is a great cleaner. They can get in there and you can spray those parts and kind of clean them with. It also has kind of a sticky, uh, I mean, a, a greasy feel to it that actually a lot of people think of it as a lubricant. It's actually a cleaner, but it, I would spray the heck out of it with some WD-40 if it was my game. <laughs> There you go. And, of course, you can always replace it if you if it's been a while since, uh, you know, you replaced it. Of course, it's working good. Like, let it go. And then, like Tim mentioned, just give it a cleaning. And it, it hopefully it'll it'll stop that squeaking once you've done that. Uh, Nightsy old, old says, is the correct order, um, as far as wiring it, plug to the on-off switch to the power supply? And so that's typically what we'd like to do. You'll go, your power plug will connect up to your power switch, and then all of that will usually connect to... Um, usually a distribution block 
that would go to your switching power supply and your monitor and maybe your marquee light as well, right, Tim? Right. And if you need to know more about that, um, the real Bob Roberts has a nice AC wiring diagram that we like to use, Tim, that shows how all that stuff should be hooked up. And so if you go to therealbobroberts.net, you look up his AC wiring diagram. That's the way me and Tim always wire the bottom of cabinets if we can. That's so. how we learn. That's how we do it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, that's and where we learned it. I was about to say, Bob used to sell the entire cabinet bottom. I don't know if he still does, Tim, but um, there for a yeah. while he would sell you an entire cabinet bottom with everything ready to go. Basically, power switching power supply on there, isolation transformer, you had the, the fuses, you had the AC filter, and the power cord coming out of it. It was super simple. You just throw that into an empty cabinet and go. And so, but the way the way that he does it is the way we prefer as well. So, uh, let's see um delusional arcade says for that miss pac-man bar issue i'd swap in a known working pcb uh to to um to to take out the power in other words to eliminate the yeah. power supply as an issue if you've got a known working pcb uh for a pac-man or a miss pac-man you could definitely swap that in there and see if the same issue carries on when you have the working board as well not everybody has access to another working board tim obviously but um if you do chris that may be a good way to go about it as well and so um pac-man boards are not hard to get your hands on and you may know another collector in your area or, or operator that has one that may just be willing for you to to borrow it to swap in to see if the problem follows it so because it's not like your board it's not like it blew up your board you know what i'm saying your board seems to be working properly uh or it could be a problem with your board but i don't think it's going to harm it to swap a working board into that cabinet what do you think tim no i don't think so yeah i mean it seems like that board is working good enough that even if you swapped in a working board you could find out whether it was the cabinet or whether it was the board that was giving you the issue so great idea there delusional we do appreciate that feedback uh, let's see. Knights of Old, any update on typical Wells Garner monitor availability? Getting more scarce. Are there any other CRT alternatives? Yeah. So, I mean, Wells Garner has pretty much shifted all of their production to LCD at this point. So, Wells Garner is still very much around, but they're pretty much focusing only on LCD, which is what pretty much every monitor manufacturer is. There are some companies that are selling um, CRT monitors, right, Tim, out of, uh, out of Asia, I believe? Yeah. I haven't bought one in a, a year or two, so probably not the best source. Maybe somebody in the chat room has recently. They'll pop up sometimes. I know the last one we got, um, we got a 25 and a, the 19. The 19 always seemed to work really good, but the 25, I mean opposite, the 25 worked really good, but the 19 just seemed to give us a lot of issues. Uh, I don't know if we mishandled it, having it in storage and everything, but um, I, I thought they were pretty cheap. I thought it was just I would almost rather find a used old Wells Garner and rebuild it than some of the new stuff they've come out with. Right, and now they do have chassis that you can get that'll fit that are basically universal and will fit most any 19 or 25 inch tube and so if you just found like a tube a working tube even you could use those chassis on those tubes and so that may be a way to find a replacement crt is just to you know go down to your local junkyard find a nice tv with a 25 or 19 inch tube and then buy a generic chassis to put on it to work in an arcade game you could always go that route um but for the most part, it seems like the ones that they are producing now, even the ones out of Asia, are not really great quality. And so it's just, I mean, it's coming down to the fact, Tim, that we're not always going to be able to get CRTs. And so we kind of, you know, there may just be a time where we just have to go full on LCD with most things, depending. So. Right. And it's sad, but, um, you know, we're going to try our best. I mean, obviously, we try our best to keep things alive here as long as possible. But... You know, CRT availability is scarce to say the least, and so you do want to, you know, if you can't find a readily available CRT in your area, you just might consider LCD. Some of these new LCDs are really great, Tim. I know, um, I know some of the we talked about that 25 inch one from that company, Tim. They did the reviews on it recently, and the reviews weren't great, but still, I mean, it looks like there's going to be some alternative LCDs out there that are four by three that will fit in arcade gap cabinets natively. And so, I mean, if that's the case, it should it's going to be pretty close to the same experience you'd get with a CRT. Obviously, it's flat screen and it's an LCD, but if we're at least getting the four by three, I feel like we're at least we still have a little bit of a feel of a CRT in there, right, Tim? I agree. Yeah. yeah. So. There you go. Okay, Tim, well, let us get to the quick question and answer section of the show tonight. And for those of you guys who have never been here before, this is where I rapid fire three questions at Tim. And then Tim rapid fires three answers back on these questions. And so with that said, let us go on to these questions real quick. So, Tim, the first one we have is from Virtual Robots Revolt. 
And they say, if the red color gun is not working, can the monitor be fixed? So, very first question, red color gu gun is not working, can the monitor be fixed? Uh, Joshua has an Atari Zybots, the screen comes on, it's really whitewashed, and then the whole thing will shut off. I don't see anything wrong with the wires, the fuses look fine, I do not know what to do. And then we also have Tom, who's got a Miss Pac-Man 60 in one board. Okay, it was playing blind, he hooked a computer monitor up to it, and then a few minutes the power supply went out, he replaced it with another one, and that one started smoking and went out. Okay, so what do you think? Is it a problem with 61 board or the adapter? Thanks, Tom from Indiana. So, Virtual Robot Revolts, Red Color Gun not working. Can the monitor be saved? Um, Joshua with the Zybots, it comes on, but um, it'll just shut off, and I don't see anything wrong with the wiring. And then Tom with a 60 and 1 that's blown two power supplies due to smoking, which is pretty pretty suspect as well. So, Tim, let us go and rapid fire these 1, 2, 3. Give me these answers on these. So, Tim, if the red color gun is not working, can the monitor be fixed? That is our first one. So, what do you think? Um... It's possible through tube rejuvenation. Outside of that, no, it's right. not not a lot you can do. But I, we have that's why people use a tube rejuvenator. A lot of times, it can fix those issues. Agreed. So Joshua has the Zybots, and it's, it sounds like it comes on for a while and then it shuts back off. What does Joshua need to do in order to get this thing running? Well, we talked about this earlier. You're going to start at power always and check the all the way from the power to your house. We've even had games that weren't the right power coming out of the wall. So you want to check from the wall all the way through, start at your power and make sure you uh, you have to have a multimeter, um, but check all your voltages from the wall all the way through your power supplies. And then we have Tom who has a Miss Pac-Man with the 60 and one adapter and 61 board installed and it's blowing these power supplies like left and right. What do you think is going on? Is it a problem with the board, the adapter or what's going on? One of the best ways to do is unplug your board and then, but the fact that it's, you don't usually get that kind of feedback from a board that would take out a power supply. It just wouldn't work most of the time. Usually when you're seeing that, there's something else going on in your cabinet causing feedback, like could be an AC wire touching somewhere or a bad light even up in the top of the game. So literally... Um, you're going to ch start checking your wiring and stuff is the best thing I can say and disconnect all the DC voltages and kind of find out where it's coming from, where you're getting this massive feedback. Having said that, is it possible that it's bored? But it would literally probably be like a board that was touching metal or something. It's not very common that a component would go out on a board and throw that kind of feedback. It's usually on the back of the boards, two wires are touching or something like that. Or I have seen somebody actually install a board straight to metal and just short out the power supply. To get that kind of feedback, something mega is probably going on like that. Now, um, Nate also said on the power supply question, ask if they switched it from 120 to 220. Most folks don't know they have to switch it, assuming it's one of those. Uh, that is a, that is great. A, a great thing to chime in there with, you know, something we don't discuss very often because it's pretty rare, but he's correct. If they don't switch, if you got the wrong power going to it, you're going to blow a lot of stuff. Uh, speaking of that, Tim, I've been helping the Regzer show with his track and field, and he had a switching power supply, and he, he tested it with two different meters, and it always came up, the 5 volts always came up like 420, even when he turned it up all the way, 4.20. And it turned out he had it on 220. So the power supply was expecting 220, but he was only feeding it 120. So the five volts was coming out at like 4.2. Well, when he switched ah. it to when he switched it to 120, guess what happened? Solid yeah, five volts. Yeah. So I mean that definitely happens. So you definitely need to check that switch on the bottom. It's very important that you do. Well, Tim, I think we covered all three. So let's go ahead and look at the outline here, so we can kind of summarize what you said. Boom. Um, so virtual robots revolt. If the red color gun on the tube is not working, there's just not much you can do. With that said, a tube rejuvenator may be possible to restore. It may be able to, but you got to remember if you're kind of to this point where you're totally missing it, um, the rejuvenator may not work. I mean, it's possible, but there's a good chance it won't. I don't even know if it's a 50-50 shot, Tim. It may be a 75-25 shot. 25% shot, it would work, right? But it's at least worth the shot. So if you have a tube rejuvenator, at least uh, throw the tube on it, or throw the rejuvenator on the tube, and see if the red can come back. But otherwise, you're probably looking for a new tube. So Joshua on the Zybots, again... 
Tim has stressed this earlier in the show, but we want to stress it again. ASAP, always start at power. Get a multimeter. Let's test those voltages. Start the AC coming from the power cord and go from there. And so, um, and Tim, I, I took a picture of them. Uh, from the Zybot's manual, and you will notice that it is a standard switching power supply in that game. And so you should be able to test that pretty easily using a multimeter. Uh, not a whole lot that's um, that's going to go wrong. Now, if that monitor, if it's just the monitor that's going out and you have the playing blind, then we may have a monitor issue there. Um, but Timmy didn't specifically say that he was still getting sound after the monitor went off. So we're just going to assume that it may just be a power issue at this point. But if you have additional questions, you can email us, let us know, and uh, we'll try to help you out. Now, on Tom's, again, sounds like your power supply is getting some feedback from somewhere. Let's check those input voltages first, make sure they're good. Then disconnect all DC voltages from the power supply. See if it runs without smoking. Tim mentioned let's unhook all the boards and see if it'll run without smoking the power supply. That'll let us know if we're getting feedback from the board or are we getting feedback from the wiring, right, Tim? Yeah. And then, I, go ahead. I kind of dread that method because whatever causes it, you might go through another power supply. But just keep looking and keep reading your voltages and seeing what causes that. It, it, sometimes it's a tough method to use, but it often works. Some power supplies have a, an internal fuse. Yes. And so if you have one that has an internal fuse, it may blow that internal fuse. Now, the ones that's, if your power supply smoked, it may... It could have been the fuse smoking or it could have been the power supply smoking. But if you open yeah. up the power supply, a lot of times there'll be an internal fuse. And so you may just it may just be a matter of replacing that fuse every time you start getting that feedback. And so you may go through some fuses, Tim, but hopefully you're not going through power supplies. So Hopefully not. There you go. So, um, but again, we're trying to figure out if it's a board or a wiring issue. So let's try to run the, the cabinet without the board to see, and maybe with just the adapter to see if it works. Or maybe even without the adapter, Tim, right? Let's just start with just... Plain old, plain cabinet, no board or adapter hooked up. Let's see if that works. Then let's go to just the adapter. Okay, are we getting any feedback to that power supply? And then move on to the board from there. And that'll, that should give us a good starting point as to whether it's the board or, or the adapter or something else. And of course, Tim, you may want to check the voltages off the harness at each point. So check the voltages at the Pac-Man harness, make sure all the voltages are good there. Check the voltages at the adapter, make sure all the all of the voltages are good there. And then uh, once you put the board on it, you know, check to make sure all the voltages are good on the board as well. So, and it could just be like misgrounded. It could be a grounding uh, short or something like that as well. Really hard to troubleshoot those things. It's just a lot of trial and error, right, Tim? Exactly. Or so, a lot. So, Tom, hopefully that answers yours as well, but hopefully we gave everybody here a good place to start on your issues. Unfortunately, it sounds like for Virtual Robots Revolt, his two may be gone. Joshua, again, let's start that power supply on that Zybots. And, Tom, uh, let's do some process of elimination on your cabinet, see if we can figure out what's causing those power supplies to blow. So, okay. Well, Tim, I think that about covers it for all the questions for this month. A couple of comments here in the live chat. Joe says, Zybots is the heaviest cabinet on Earth, LOL. Um, I believe that. What? I believe that. <laughs> it's heavy, but I've got a contender. Virtua Fighter. Yeah. Virtua Fighter is heavy. If we're just talking about standard arcade cabinets, now obviously we could go into, um, uh, you know, we could go into some of the sit-down style cabinets, Tim. I think those are heavier. If you've never moved a Virtua Fighter cabinet, I think the Virtua Fighter has a beat. 25-inch monitor, Tim. Yeah. You know, Zybots only had 19, if I remember correctly. <laughs> so... Um, if you guys, um, it looked like Delusional said search for The Real Bob Roberts. If you're looking for The Real Bob Roberts website, therealbobroberts.net. If you go there, it should still take you to his website. So therealbobroberts.net, all one word there, and it'll take you there. So, Well, Tim, we're done with questions, but that doesn't mean the show's over. We got a lot more to cover. And Tim, earlier this month, we had a deal on some stretch wrap. And I posted it in the Facebook group because, you know, stretch wrap is something that's very handy to have. And so I thought I would get you to expound upon that and tell us what's so great about stretch wrap. So Tim's tech tip for this month. Use right. stretch wrap when moving games. So, Tim, I'm just going to wind you up and let you go because I think you can talk a lot on this topic, right? Yes. Okay, go for it. So we started using stretch wrap pretty early when we are moving games. Even if we didn't have to move them very far, uh, there's a couple things about it. Uh, one thing, I think, to all of us collectors, it protects the artwork and stuff when you're moving and getting skint. 
It also keeps like your coin door from flapping open, your back door from coming undone, things from falling off. Uh, Jonathan, one time, you remember we bought, uh, we went to an auction and we kind of got into auction fever because my son was playing this Popeye game. This is before we met. Yeah. I just know the story. This is before we met. Wow. I didn't realize that. So yeah, a long time ago. Um, and he really liked this Popeye game, so I think I overpaid for it. At the time, that seemed like a lot of money. It was like $400, and when games like that were generally going for about 200 and I know a lot of people out there was like, well, I would give you $400 for a Popeye game right now, I'm sure. But again, we're talking about late uh, 90s, and uh, so I, my friend laughed. He said, well, at least it's got the best bezel I have ever seen on on any Popeye game. It was like perfect. And that's a lot before there were reproduction bezels and stuff. So even though I felt like I overpaid on a Popeye, I did have the nicest bezel one that I'd ever seen. And so we were getting ready to go home and we strapped it down in the truck. And the wind came through and that pretty bezel ended up down on the interstate somewhere and there was no going back for it uh, so uh, then once I got it home we had this game so the solution that I kind of came up with was from then on I would just stretch wrap everything and that would have at least even if the bezel one win wouldn't have come through there like it did um, so just a good way to protect your games um, now you might see in the picture that one of them uh, has the fancy holder those probably cost a little extra. Um, that thing will eat your hand up when you're trying to shrink wrap. We've never actually done a video on how to do it, but you want to pull it as tight as possible. But one way that you can do that without cutting your hands, just cut a couple pieces of small cardboard and stick them in the ends where your hands are cupped like this, where your hand's not getting cut by that thing. And you can wrap around one pretty good. So the way I do it is I pull one side, stretch it. Then I pull and stretch, pull and stretch as I go around from top to bottom. Works great on pinball games, anything like that. If you don't have some shrink wrap, it's almost a must. I keep it in the truck back seat all the time. You never know. Even moving furniture or if my wife finds something on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, not long ago, we bought a, um, a coffee table or something and I shrink wrapped it real quick and we put it in the car. Um, so just a great thing to have and a good tech uh, tip if you've never uh, used it before. A lot of you probably have. It's something good good to have and keep around. And a roll like that could last you a lifetime almost, depending on how many games you move. So just because it's 20, 20 or thirty dollars, um, you're going to that's a lot, a lot of wrap that you would use that for. Yeah, the deal we had, Tim, was for a thousand feet, and that's in two five hundred foot rolls. So, uh, yeah. and that it came with the little holder too, which is really nice. So that way, you know, you could just put the handles on and just wrap it around. Wow. Me and Tim, that's a good deal. yeah, me and Tim will get on either side of that cabinet. We'll just hand each other back the stretch wrap as we're going around, and we can get a game wrapped in like two minutes, quick. Yeah. So, you know, if there's two of us, it doesn't take long. But, um, you know. A lot of times, Tim, like you said, coin doors, when you're going down the highway, coin doors will flap open because, you know, they took the locks off of them for the auction. Or the back door will be missing and stuff will just be flying out of the back of cabinets. Or I mean, stretch wrap just prevents all those headaches. Okay, and it's not, um, this deal, unfortunately, is not going on anymore, but I still have the link down below. I think it's gone up to like 26 bucks, Tim. So that's only gone up like maybe $3 or something like that. But just okay. do yourself a favor and get you some stretch wrap for your truck or whatever and it, like i said more good for more than just arcade games right tim correct yeah for moving furniture uh great on pinball machines because what we'll do a lot of times is we'll we'll wrap like the top half of the body of the pinball and then we'll then we'll lay the neck or the head down onto that wrap and then wrap all around that right tim correct yeah so that way we can protect they would protect the body part of the pinball machine as well as the head part of the pinball machine. So, um, yeah, even on like an arcade game, you could put a big piece of cardboard on the side and wrap around that. Or what I like to do, John, is I put a blanket over it and then wrap the blanket 
to it where I don't have to tie the blanket down, but I wrap the blanket to it. That gives me some cushion protection and it makes it a whole lot easier uh, just handling. And it's funny you say that, Tim, because John actually said that exact same thing in the live chat. So <laughs> put the moving blanket on it and then stretch wrap it around. So that's a good way to yeah. do it as well. So lots of different ways to do it, but we just highly recommend that you do it because it will save you a lot of trouble. So for sure. And oh. you can get this, I mean, a thousand feet, like Tim mentioned, that'll do who knows how many games. I mean, golly, you could you could probably buy this kit and uh, have it in your car for you know years, depending on how many games you're moving. So, But just a good thing to have. And like I said, since it came up, uh, on a deal earlier this month. I thought I'd have Tim talk about it because it is something that can be very handy. And if you'd like to buy your own kit like this, we do have a link down below in the in the description for the show. You can buy yours there. Again, it's gone up a couple of bucks, but it's still a really good deal for a thousand feet worth of, shri of um, stretch or shrink wrap, whatever you want to call it. So there you go. Uh, Tim, anything else on stretch wrap before we move on? No, I'm good. There you go. So, uh, guys, just keep that in mind. It's a great tip, Tim. Let's get let's get our game stretch wrapped when we're moving them. Let's keep them together. Another thing is, Tim, have you ever gotten a cabinet that's really water damaged? Yeah. And so a lot of times there'll be chunks of the cabinet that will come off as you're moving yeah. it because, like, the whole bottom is water damaged. If you stretch wrap that, that will keep that from happening. You'll be able to dolly it a lot easier. So. Agreed. So there you go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, um, John says he also uses gloves with his wrap. So instead of having the little handles, he'll just wear gloves around. That's a good way as well. So, uh, but that's good stuff. There you go. So, now, Tim, I added something last minute, literally last minute, to the outline. Did okay. you see this? I saw well, it. I, it literally came up last night. So I was like, well, <laughs> we're going to get this on because we got a lot of comments but we didn't get input from the live show audience. And I, I think live input may be better on this topic. So, uh, Tim, we saw a very unique Cruising USA cabinet on Facebook Marketplace. And so I'm going to go ahead and throw up the slide here so people can see it. Um, Tim, this Cruising USA cabinet has been cut down. So the, 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 basically the part of the cabinet that housed the CRT monitor was cut off. Okay, and just made to be a flat surface. And then they installed an LCD pedestal monitor mount um, in, order to, in order to view the game. Okay, mm -hmm. and so we asked the audience last night what they thought of this modification. I'm going to go ahead and read a couple of those comments, Tim, so that we can kind of give some thoughts from those people. But what I really want to hear is the thoughts from the live show audience as well as Tim's thoughts. So Tim, why don't you give us your thoughts on this? What do you think of this modification to Cruising USA? Is this something that you think uh, would, is a good thing to do or maybe something that is not so great? I mean, what are your what are what are your thoughts? Enlighten us. You know, I don't hate it. <laughs> I I would if it was my game at home and you put a big screen TV up there or something, uh, a big LCD up there and i bet if you played it you would probably have a lot of fun and i kind of like that it's right there i don't dislike it now having said that i'm not a big fan of i like games that stay in the original i would almost respect it more if somebody had just built this from scratch then i would probably really like it but i get that you know we want to stick with the original stuff and they did kind of destroy the cabinet there's a little difference there, but you know what? To each his own. I don't have a problem with it. So let me get, well, Tim, I think I kind of fall into your camp. I mean, part of me is sad because we, we cut a cabinet, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not original, but at the same time, I actually like the fact that it's got the mount there. It means we can put a really nice screen on it, like you said. So um, yeah. let me go ahead and read some of the comments we got on the Facebook page last night. Um, Patrick Scott Patterson, our good friend Tim, said, interesting. I'd have to see the full setup for a deeper opinion, though. Now, Timmy does mention in the Facebook ad that it's still running everything original except for the monitor. So okay. everything else is original except for the monitor. So that's something to keep okay. in mind. So, um, let's see. Andrew says, unless the top was trash beyond repair, um, but to cut it and mod it, come on, man. No, I'm serious. You know, like, you know, he's saying just don't do it, right? Um, Ronnie says, oh. why not? I mean, whatever you can afford, you have to work with what you have. That was Robbie's com Ronnie's comment. Um, let's see. Tetsuya says, looks kind of sad, but they kept part of it, right, Tim? They still tried to keep most of it intact or what they could anyway. Um, Bill says he's about ready to chop his pole position two in half and take it upstairs. <laughs> I mean, if you own it, 
do what you want with it. That's kind of his point, right? Right. Um, our our uh, good friend Josh Kulak here says um, it would definitely increase revenue if still routed. It looks newer, would definitely draw more attention. LED T molding, and you have a new game, right? <laughs> so mm-hmm. um, let's see. A lot of people didn't like the fact, Tim, that we're going to a four by three to a sixteen by nine type screen from a four by three. That's always something okay. you're going to have with a monitor transition like this. Um, Sean says this looks like a hodgepodge of the Betson conversion kits. So, Tim, Betson has a conversion kit for supercars, um, which I think is an Thomas Wave-based driving game to where basically it's the same kind of thing where you mount an LCD where the CRT is, almost the same kind of cabinet modification. And uh, Carl says um, he thought it looked like the kit as well, and he likes the screen height on this a little bit better, he said. And our friend David Hohenstein, who runs American Amusement Auctions, Tim, he says it looks like they're using the exact idea from Golden Tea Cabinets. Operators all across the country about 15 years ago started cutting those big white cabinets in half, making pedestals out of them, versus spending thousands of dollars on a factory pedestal cabinet from Incredible Technologies. And so, uh, Tim, this does seem to be a trend among arcade uh, arcade repair people now, right? To where, in order to save money, they're, they're basically making it to our weekend mountain LCD there, right? Yeah. And it looks like we got a little bit of feedback here in the live chat as well, Tim. Nate says, as a collector, it hurts, and having something all original in most cases is eye-catching and attracts customers, is what he says. So, But honestly, as an operator of an arcade, I'm all for it. It saves space, and it's easier to move, especially for rentals, he says. And then okay. uh, John says, I played a rare game today. Oh, uh, he's, he's talking about something else. But he played um, a rare QB3, not Qbert Rockola game from 1982. It's a vector, he said. It was very fun. So... Um, but yeah, I think this is interesting, Tim. I think it'd be awesome to play on a large screen, but the collector in me is like, you cut an arcade cabinet in half, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. We've seen Miss Pac-Man like this, right? Sure. Where they've done this to a Miss Pac-Man. They've actually cut off the, they've cut off everything but the, they cut off the top half of the cabinet. You just have basically the bezel and the thing. So I've seen that too. But, um... Nate says, for most of these racers, an LCD monitor would make it look better. Some of these even have VGA um, ports so that the CGA to VGA uh, board isn't needed. And he's right. So a lot of these cabinets, a lot of these boards will output natively to VGA. And if that's the case, throw a monitor up there, a nice LCD monitor, Tim, you're basically in business. So I think overall, the I think some people, some people were really against it. Some people were really for it. I'm kind of of two minds, kind of like you were talking about, Tim. Part of me really, really likes it. Part of me doesn't. Yeah. So, it's hard to tell, but, I mean, hey, it's your cabinet, Tim. You do with it what you want. That would be the main point here. So, But I, I'm glad that you guys gave us a little bit of opinions on that. Um, if anybody else wants to share their opinion in the comments after the live show is over, you're more than happy to do that. We'd love to hear what you think of this Cruising USA cabinet modification. John said, how much were they asking for it? What was the asking price? Um, I think it was 700 um, okay. Now you gotta remember it was all original, so right. um, let me look and see if I can find the price real quick. I was just curious, you know, I'm like because it doesn't come with a TV. Right. So you'd have to buy the TV, but I mean monitor. TVs nowadays are dirt cheap, right? So yeah. it's, not, it's not like you're spending a lot on the TV part of it for sure. But um, I could see, like you're saying, I mean, you're still still a couple hundred dollars, right? Exactly. Easily. Seven hundred dollars in Wisconsin, Tim. Okay. So, <laughs> Joe says it looks like a rascal scooter couldn't stop in time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, actually, Tim, you know, it could look like a scooter. You know, you just add a little back half to that, you know, um, when we drive around town. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, it, I mean, it, it actually looks bigger than one of those smart cars. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yeah, so there you go. But anyway. Okay, guys, well, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the news for this month, Tim. And uh, I know a lot of people are not big into the Tron, like the last Tron movie, Tron Legacy. But, Tim, I loved it. I keep posting um, information because the third movie is being worked on and it's coming out soon. I think the script's already written. But there's something that's preventing it from happening, Tim, and that's the big strike, right? The sag after right. strike, okay? And the WGA, the Writers Guild Association, strike as well. And so it was supposed to start filming this month, but due to these strikes, the new Tron Aries, Tron 3 movie will not be coming out on time. And so, uh, and as you can imagine, Tim, the director is very frustrated about this. So, uh, Oakeem Raining uh, has confirmed that the expected production start on the Disney sequel will no longer go ahead due to the ongoing strikes. Bra- 
blaming an extremely frustrating lack of negotiations on the production's need to lay off 150 crew members indefinitely. So Tim, that's 150 jobs that are no longer there because they're not starting filming on this movie. And so I can understand why he's why he's frustrated. But you got to remember, Tim. I mean, I, I don't know if you've seen the royalties that like um, that the writers and the and the actors are getting off of streaming. Basically, it's nothing. And so all right now they're they're striking because like if you look at a traditional TV syndication deal Tim a lot of people get a lot of money from that but in in streaming they're just not getting hardly anything. So um, I understand why they're striking, but it kind of sucks for those of us who like TV shows and movies because it means that everything's delayed. So I wish they had just figure out kind of like um, the director here. I wish they had just figure all this out soon cuz I'm ready to watch some shows. So the fall schedule is all reality TV. Did you notice that Tim? I didn't notice. Yeah, so um, all of the regular shows and everything, for the most part, are, are on delay. And no different for the Tron movie, Tim. But I am still looking forward to it, no matter what. Like I said, I know a lot of people were kind of down on Legacy. Tim, what did you think of Tron Legacy? I liked it okay. It wasn't, my, wasn't one of the best movies I ever saw. It was entertaining enough. Absolutely. I thought it was fun. Um, it, you know, I love just being back in the Tron universe, Tim. Um, for some reason, it always just reminds me of the arcade, you know? I mean, every Tron movie has had that iconic arcade scene, right? The first one with Flynn's Arcade, and then, you know, obviously in Legacy, where they, you know, pull the pull the the, um, the, clo- the cloth off of all of the arcade games, and you just see this big dust cloud come up. There's just something iconic, and something I associate with Tron and arcade games, you know? And, of course, the Tron arcade game is really fun as well, Tim, and goes for a high dollar now. But, um, you know, I'll, I will always have a soft spot in my heart for Tron, and I'm hoping that they can get this, all this strike stuff settled so we can get this third movie out at some point in the future. So, um, you know, looking forward to it. Uh, like I said, I just like the universe. I want to be in that universe more, so hopefully we'll see this sooner rather than later. Uh, Tim, the next bit of news we have is that Arcade 1UP has revealed its Time Crisis um, arcade cabinet along with three other arcade cabinets. So, um, Tim, Arcade 1UP has officially revealed its um, upcoming Time Crisis cabinet. The unit will arrive later this year and cost $750. It's an authentic recreation of the iconic arcade shooter complete with two light guns, a vibrant screen, and premium built-in speakers. Arcade 1UP also announced new $500 deluxe edition cabinets of a trio of staples, Galaga Street Fighter 2, and the Atari 50th Anniversary Cabinet. Now, Tim, I feel like Arcade 1UP is going to keep releasing Street Fighter 2 and Midway-style cabinets, like, in perpetuity. But the Atari 50th Anniversary is also a different cabinet than the one that they've had earlier. It contains a lot of Atari 2600 games on it. And it has that nice black and gold aesthetic that we've seen with a lot of the Atari uh, 50th Anniversary um, games and things like that. And so, But, Tim, what do you think about the Time Crisis cabinet? I think it looked pretty sturdy and solid. I liked it. I thought it looked okay. Yeah, now yeah. 750 bucks is way beyond like what the initial um, arcade one ups were when like they first started coming out at that three hundred dollar price tag, and so we're way beyond that price right now. But I mean, you're also getting kind of a more premium experience. Do you agree? Yeah, with the both of the guns, and they kind of look similar to the original guns. We know guns aren't cheap and stuff. I don't think it's an an, an outrageous price. I think it's probably fair. Or what you get yeah and it also has the pedal down at the bottom you'll see so they actually did take yeah. the time to put the pedal in it which they didn't have to do but that does give you a more authentic experience especially with time crisis tim i love time crisis it's so fun so um but uh, yeah i think it's a cool cabinet i wish they would have included more time crisis games on there maybe time crisis 2 at the least you know because that's probably my favorite of the series but the fact that they um the, the fact that they've still they got point blank on there which is also a fun game uh steel gunner and steel gunner 2 i don't have as much experience with tim have you played either one of those yes yes uh, do you like those I games played the steel gunner for sure okay do you like those and, games uh, yeah i mean if nothing else just having the extra games on there. I mean, it comes with four. It's not bad. Right, exactly. So, I think for what you're getting, it's pretty good. And like I said, um, Galaga and Street Fighter 2, Arcade 1UP will just kind of keep releasing versions of those, I think, going forward. Uh, but the Atari 50th Anniversary cabinet is new, and um, it looks pretty cool. You guys can go online and kind of check some pictures of it, see what you think. But, uh, Tim, I don't think I'm really the market for these at this point. Um, I think there are some other people who are probably more into this than I am. But I do think it's cool that they're, they're obviously still finding an audience and that they're still able to release these cabinets. So, I agree. 
So there you go. Joe says, um, let's see, Tim can write the new Tron movie. Probably get hated on, but the last one was pretty good. There you go, you see? We're not the only ones who thought that, Tim. Yeah. Um, do you know how the guns work on this machine? Sensors, that's from Nate. I believe it is sensor-based, Tim. So I think that these are, um, you know, these use um, not optical sensors, but like uh, basically kind of like what you get with the infrared sensors on like the Wii. So something to that effect, I think, is what they're going for here. So not for sure. Um, they may have actual, like, um, picture-style camera sensors in them. I've seen that before, too. Um, I'm not sure how the other Arcade 1-Up games worked. That would probably give us a better indication of what we're looking at there. But I'm sure it's... Uh, I mean, infrared sensors have become pretty big, uh, so probably something like that. Or something more, like, uh, camera-based, I'd imagine. So, Okay, Tim, uh, the next... The next uh, little news article we have here is about a new G.I. Joe game, Tim. And it says G.I. Joe gets the Streets of Rage treatment in a brand new arcade-style brawler. And so <laughs> G.I. Joe Wrath of Cobra, a new arcade-style side-scrolling beat-em-up game, has been announced. The game will give you command of a number of G.I. Joe favorites, including Duke, Scarlet, Snake Eyes, and Roadblock. All of the iconic weapons, locations, and vehicles will be at your disposal. This game will be released on consoles and PC in the first quarter of next year, 2024, Tim. So pretty cool. Um, pretty cool thing. I, You know, Tim, I think back to the G.I. Joe Konami game, and I think a lot of people expected it to be more of a side-scrolling beat-em-up like this, but it wasn't. So maybe we're finally getting that side-scrolling beat-em-up that we expected when Konami initially got that G.I. Joe license. Tim, how do you feel about G.I. Joe in general? Oh, I, I think it's cool. It's a good theme. I mean, a lot of people remember it. Pretty iconic from uh, both of our eras of growing up. Um, timeless. You know, G.I. Joe goes way back, even older than arcade games. So, um, and, and still has some stuff today. So, I like it. I think it, it should do okay. It'd be interesting. I would definitely play it. If I saw one uh, at an arcade, I'd want to play it. Yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, we played, I've played the original G.I. Joe by Konami from back in the day, and it's okay. Like I said, it really wasn't, I think, what we were expecting out of out of um, Konami. They were known so much for their side-scrolling beat-em-ups like this. But um, right. hopefully we're finally getting that in this. And so um, I'm excited to see when it comes out. Of course, it's going to be on PC, Tim, which means that if you have a, um, if you have a main cabinet, you can obviously play it on that, which is really fun as well. Right, Tim? Correct. Absolutely. So... Uh, let's see what our next news article is. Oh, Tim, this is probably the biggest news article that we had for the month. And this is the Atari 2600 Plus. Now, Tim, did you hear about this? You do know what I'm talking about? Yes, I did hear about this. Okay, so the article from The Verge here says a new Atari 2600 will play your old cartridges. Atari has announced the Atari 2600 Plus. The new console will be released on November 17th and will cost $129.99. Uh, Pre-orders are open now, so if you guys want to pre-order from either Atari directly or Amazon, you can. Um, let's see, it's a fully functioning 80% scale HDMI outputting version of the console, and it comes with a 10-in-1 game cartridge. Atari says it supports both 2600 and later 7800 game cartridges, and will work with original joystick and panel controllers. Tim... Atari has been leaning into nostalgia a lot lately. I mean, we saw yeah. it with the with the reproduction PCBs. We've seen it with the Atari 2600 cartridge releases. And this is just another example of that. And Tim, there was more news that just came out today that they bought the Atari Age website. I don't know if you saw that as well. I did see that. Yeah, so, I mean, I think this is great that Atari is leaning into this nostalgia and, and finally giving us a lot of the things I think we've always wanted. I, I think a lot of people have always wanted a nice Atari 2600 that would uh, not only play your cartridges, but also allow you to um, to hook up to a, a new style TV and play those cartridges. And so I think that's going to be a really fun uh, fun device when it comes out. Uh, personally, I think the $129.99 price tag is a little on the expensive side. What do you think, Tim? Uh, you know, the, the original cost more than that, John, my first one. So it doesn't sound super outrageously expensive by most prices today. But I think we'll see a lot of those. I think a sweet spot around $99 or, or less. When they start going on sale, I definitely think they'll sell more. Agreed. 99 does seem to be the sweet spot here. But Tim, I know a lot of people have already pre-ordered, including a lot of people who commented on our story that we posted on our Facebook page. There were several that said they had already pre-ordered. So obviously for everybody, uh, the one twenty nine ninety nine might be a little expensive for me and Tim, but obviously a lot of you guys, you're more than happy to pull the trigger. So um, hey, to each their own. 
Hopefully you enjoy your new Atari 2600 Plus. We'd love to see what some of you guys, uh, uh, some of your guys' thoughts whenever you guys receive them and then start playing with them, what you guys think of them. Uh, so please, if you have any of those thoughts or anything like that, please let us know. So the 10 to 1 cartridge that comes with it, those are all new games? I think they're all classics, Tim. I'm pretty sure one of them on there is Yar's Revenge. Okay. But I don't know what else is on that cartridge offhand. I think it's all classics, though. Okay. So I could be wrong about that, but um, we can probably look it up real quick, or maybe somebody in the live chat could give us um, could give us a little update on that. Let me see if I can find any information on it myself. Um, but yeah, I'm, I think it's all classic games. I was pretty sure. I was pretty sure Yars, like I said, Yars Revenge is in on that. So, but I'm not sure what else is on there along with it. Oh, Combat is part of the ten, Tim. It looks like. Uh, okay. Let's see, Adventure. Missile Command, those are definitely on there. Oh, okay, Adventure, oh. Combat, Dodge em, Haunted House, Maze Craze, Missile Command, Real Sports Volleyball, uh, Surround, Video Pinball, and Yars Revenge. Those are the ten. Nice. So, I mean, it's all classics for the most part, right? Yeah. It sounds like it, so there you go. But yeah, so you get that 10-in-1 cartridge with it, so you'll have something to play. But if you got any Atari 2600 games around, you get to play those too. So good stuff. Pretty cool. Well, Tim, I think we're about ready to wrap it up. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into uh, some of our uh, you know, contact information and other reminders like that. Um, is there anything else, though, that you have here in the news section you want to talk about before we move on? Are you pretty, you, uh, is there anything that piqued your interest that you saw that maybe I didn't discuss tonight? I'm curious. Uh, no, that was a pretty um, pretty long segment there. Actually, we had it seems like it's kind of neat all the new things coming out, and I appreciate the work that you and Mark and other people do on our Facebook page. So, guys, uh, you you hear about this stuff there first. So, if uh, you're catching it secondhand now, make sure and join us on Facebook so that you can get this stuff kind of hot off the press. Agreed, Tim. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and give a little bit of information here in our contact, our contact info as well, and that way we can get you guys on your way. So, a reminder, we always want your arcade-related videos. If you want some free advertising for your YouTube channel, we're always looking for people to submit short videos, 10 minutes or less, about arcade-related topics. Send a link of your video to questions at arcaderepairtips.com, and our staff will review it. If we like it, we'll use it during one of our live show episodes. Make sure to put a plug in for your channel so people will know where to find you. We look forward to seeing your submissions. And, Tim, uh, we've been doing this for a long time now, but this is just a reminder that, you know, if you've got an arcade-related channel, we want to help you out. We want to help you build your audience and some of our audience your way and uh, hopefully help you maybe get over that monetization threshold because we all know that that's kind of a hard threshold to get over um, you have to have a certain number of views a certain number of subscribers and so if you're on the verge of being monetized and you just need a little bump up this is a great opportunity for you to take advantage of and so uh, again any arcade related channels though are welcome if you even if you're not arcade related channel if you just have arcade related content on your channel uh, if you will send that to us we'd be happy to promote it for you and hopefully send some of our subscribers your way especially if it's something we think our subscribers would like so just a reminder guys and then of course we have our contact information we have our general email at questions at arcade repair tips.com questions at arcade repair tips.com and, and a reminder if you put live show on the subject we will save it for the live show otherwise we will answer it whenever we get around to it again our general email address is questions at arcade repair tips.com and that sends that goes to me and tim and we will uh, get around to it when we do or we'll save it for the live show and answer it here questions at arcade repair tips.com guys we also have our YouTube page at youtube.arcaderepairtips.com. Obviously, those of you guys who are here in the live chat know exactly where our YouTube page is, but you may be listening to this on the Question and Answer podcast feed, and you may be wanting to see the after show because we do not put that on the audio feed. So if you want to hear the after show, make sure you look up episode 79 on our YouTube page at youtube.arcaderepairtips.com and go jump to the after show if you want to hear about that. We'll give a teaser for that coming up. But we do try to cover comments from the last live show episode on the next episode. So if you leave a comment here for this one, we'll try to cover it on episode 80, Tim, 80. Wow. So, yeah, we're getting we're getting close to 100. I'm getting nervous. But anyway, uh, youtube.arcaderepairtips.com if you guys want to check out our YouTube channel. Tim, we also have our podcast feed, which has our live show episodes, audio from those, interviews, question and answer podcast, etc. And you guys can check them out. Um, 
basically wherever podcasts are aggregated, but on three these three platforms specifically, iTunes at iTunes.ArcadeRepairTips.com. We have our Spotify page at Spotify.ArcadeRepairTips.com. And Tim, I normally say something about our Stitcher page, but Stitcher is no longer a thing. So I will send you to our Audible page at audible.arcaderpairtips.com. Now, Tim, the cool thing is that you can leave us a review on any one of those or on all three. So if you like what you're listening to, we would highly encourage you to leave a review either on iTunes, Spotify, or Audible telling people how great this live show, podcast, whatever this thing is that we do. And if you're not so impressed with us, send us an email and let us know how we can improve. We're always... Always looking for good feedback, right, Tim? Yes. So again, iTunes.ArcadeRepairTips.com if you are an iTunes guy. Spotify.ArcadeRepairTips.com if you prefer Spotify to listen to your podcast. Or you can also do Audible.ArcadeRepairTips.com if you use Audible. Or if you search for Arcade Repair Tips on your podcast aggregator, you'll probably find us. So again, uh, if if you do check out the iTunes, Spotify, or Audible pages, be sure to leave us a good review. We would highly appreciate it. And then, Tim, we have our social media pages. We have our Facebook page at facebook.arcaderepairtips.com, facebook.arcaderepairtips.com, and we have our Twitter feed at twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. And, Tim, I'm still saying Twitter. I know it's called X now. Yes. <laughs> but uh, it's Twitter. It's hard to get away from it, isn't I'm it? still calling it Twitter. Sorry, Elon. Twitter. Mm-hmm. So twitter.arcaderepairtips.com. You can find us there. Or facebook.arcaderepairtips.com. We do want to thank Mark, one of our community managers, for all of his work posting pinball stuff tim he posted all the stuff about the jurassic park uh, 25th anniversary pinball machine uh that just uh, got released and so um that's really great stuff as well and but if you guys want to check out the news before it gets covered here on the live show you can subscribe to one of our feeds there either facebook or twitter and uh, and follow us and find that news there now tim i got a little comment here in the live chat from carlos he says just want to say thank you for the heat gun i never won anything before it came quick Thanks again. So Carlos won the heat gun from the previous episode. So congratulations, Carlos. We're glad that you got that heat gun. Tim, we do ship out the prizes that we give away. You know, Tim, we haven't given away anything tonight. Yeah. Should we fix that? Sure. Let's do it right now. I have this Space Invaders projection light. What do you think? Oh, how cool. Yeah, so this is a Space Invaders projection light. It says a color-changing projection, Tim. Oh, so this cool. light is not a toy, it says. Um, battery's not included, so you will have to get those. But this is a Space Invaders projection light, and it can be yours if you will send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com and make sure you inclo- include the keyword, Tim? Uh, say Wichita, since I'm in Wichita. And Wichita. Be, it's W-I-C-H-I-T-A. So Wichita, like Wichita, Kansas, where I'm traveling from, That'll let us know you watch the show tonight. Um, so I'm in Wichita, Kansas. If you will put Wichita in that subject line, we will get you entered. So and I, I get, may, and I'm okay. going to do that one myself, John. That, that's a pretty cool present. Okay, so send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com. Make sure you put in the keyword Wichita in there. And make sure you put your shipping address and if you do those three things, one person will win this awesome Space Invaders projection light, and I will ship it out to you. So, again, contest. Send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com. Make sure you put in the keyword Wichita and your shipping address, and one lucky viewer listener will get a chance to win this. Tim, we're going to keep this open for 24 hours. So, uh, about uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow night is when we will shut this down. So, if you're watching this within the first 24 hours, you will get a chance to win this nice Space Invaders projection light. Again, one more time, send an email to contest at arcaderepairtips.com. Put the keyword Wichita in the subject or in the body or somewhere I can find it. Put your shipping address and we will enter you to win this nice thing. Again, we do not sell your information. All information is kept private. We do not give your information away to anybody. So there we go. Okay, Tim. Well, I think that's going to do it for our regular show. So that means we got everybody out uh, out out here in time for football right tim yeah so all you guys are going to be able to actually watch the football game tonight but we'll be talking about football in the after show here what else are we going to be talking about tim well we'll probably talk about some movies maybe some investments who knows what we'll get to talking about we usually steer clear of politics but if you got any questions or other arcade things we'll talk about them too can i talk about how politics is affecting one of my stocks maybe maybe so Okay. <laughs> well, it's not just politics, but we'll talk about... I think I may just mention that. And it's not 
it's not anything right or left. It's just the fact. It's a fact, right? right? That politics is affecting one of my stocks. Yeah, anyway. I believe so. So we'll talk about that. We'll be talking about some movies and some TV shows that we've seen recently. Uh, Tim, um, I just finished up the After Party on Apple TV, which is fantastic, and we'll talk about that, along with some other TV shows that we've both been watching as well. So we hope that you stay tuned for the After Show. If you guys are new to this, we do the After Show about five minutes after this show, and you just have to stay tuned here if you're watching live. You don't have to go anywhere. Just stay where you are. We're going to take a break for about five, ten minutes, and we'll come right back. If you're listening to this on the Question and Answer podcast feed, you will need to go to the YouTube version of this episode to check out the after show. So, But, Tim, I think we're about ready to wrap it up here. I'm going to go ahead and come over to, um, to the live chat one more time. Carlos says, um, let's see. Car- Carlos just said, thank you for the heat gun, Tim, and I'm glad that he won. That's awesome. YouTube Punk says it's still Twitter to him, and I, I agree. It is still Twitter to me, too. So... Um, YouTube Punk says, treat your heat gun like it's always loaded, Carlos. So there you go. That's a that's an important thing to do. You know, you don't want to be pointing that thing in the wrong direction, Tim. So anyway, well, anything else to say, Tim, before we move into the after show and say goodbye? No, goodbye, everybody. Thank you all for watching and listening and being so loyal. And good luck to those who are entering into the contest tonight. Absolutely. And thank all y'all for being here tonight. What a wonderful live show audience. You guys were fantastic as always. Y'all bring the energy, so me and Tim try to bring the energy too. Uh, Tim, I will be honest with you. I'm tired, and I know we were talking beforehand, and you were tired as well. So, um, but there's... I'm going to apologize for yawning some. I have had a long couple days. <laughs> but there's something about getting into the show and just getting excited and having a good time. And so we want to thank the live chat audience for being here and feeding the energy to us tonight uh, because you guys you're the reason we do why we do is because you guys enjoyed and so thank y'all for being here tonight thank you for interacting with us and if this is your off ramp then we hope that we'll see you in for our october episode tim which is coming up very soon okay but we do hope you stay for the after show here in just about five to ten minutes but if not then we'll see you next month and remember here at arcade repair tips when we fix the game we play the Take game. Take care, everybody. Bye, everybody. We'll either see you in the after show or we'll see you for our October episode next month. Thank you for watching this episode of the Arcade Repair Tips live show. All of our past episodes are available on our website at ArcadeRepairTips.com or on our YouTube page. This show is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please consult a professional before attempting to repair any coin-operated machines yourself. The preceding program is a Varcade Entertainment production.
And we're back, everybody. Welcome to the after show for episode 79 of the Arcade Repair Tips live show. So, um, for those of you guys who may be new here, the after show is just a place where we basically talk about any topic. There's no topic off limits. We can still talk about arcade stuff here, but we also talk about some other things as well. We did tease um, that we were going to talk about some stocks and some other things. But we did get a question in from Nate while we were waiting to come back from uh, from the little break. And his question is, wondering how you fellas feel about arcade one-ups being used for operation. I myself wouldn't, but curious your thoughts. If the reason is no, why? Um, Street Fighter cabinet dies in an arcade, but you took the guts out of a one-up machine and tossed it into original Street Fighter cabinet. Would you change your thoughts? Uh, so, Tim, I think we've talked about this a little bit in the past because we've seen it in operation before. But just in general, what are your thoughts about um, arcade one-ups uh, being operated? Well, they're not designed for that. They're, they're, they, they're not. I'm not sure about licensing and stuff like that. But just they simply won't hold up. Um, they're not made for that. They're made for home. Uh, so having said that, I don't think I would operate and put any of them out on a route anywhere. Although, um, you know, I was in Austin, Texas just a couple weeks ago and I was hungry. And when you're in Austin, you got to eat barbecue. So I went to a barbecue place and they had a couple over there. Basically though, they were on free play just for kids to play. Um, and so I kind of saw that. I thought it was cool that they had them there and kids were playing them uh, because they were on free play and stuff. So I, maybe there's some kind of place for it like that, maybe a dentist office or something, I'm thinking. But for the most part, no. I, I don't think that they belong in a – they're not uh, commercial machines, you know. Agreed. And, um, you know, they're – I'm especially weary of the times when they hook up like either um, uh, like uh, card swipes or coin coin acceptors to them because that that just seems like that's not the right thing to do. I think in a free play environment it's fine because I mean it's kind of like you get what you pay for. If it's sitting there and it's free to play, right. then it's free to play. I mean it's no different than having a game console there for that. But um, when you're talking about actual operated environment where where you're taking money in order for people to play, I, I feel like that's probably not the best. They're not really designed for that to begin with. And um, and on top of that, you know, you're doing a lot of rigging to accomplish those kind of things by putting like a coin mech or a or a card swipe on there. And so I, to me, it's just it, it's just not something that I think is really great a great idea to do. As far as taking the guts of an arcade one up and putting it into a regular cabinet, again, not something I w I would prefer you do anybody do. Um, just get a replacement board. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna just throw a computer in there, or if you're gonna throw an arcade one up. Um, board in there, you might as well throw a computer in there, right? I mean, and if you've right. got the computer and it's only running that one game and you have the original board in there, I mean, technically you can do that. That's legal. So, I mean, but, um, but you know, we're always weary of operating emulated base machines out on route anyway. And so, I mean, I think with that in mind, we would shy away from it. Is that what you think, Tim? I would think so, yeah. yeah. So, um, there you go. Uh, Nate says, we see one-ups mostly with card swipes, but what if they were modified to accept tokens coins, switch out the LCD in the machine for a CRT? If you modify the riser to be adult height, again, I, swapping out the monitor seems like big overkill on that. Um, and those cam the cabinets, I don't think would have the space for that. You'd have to have a pretty small CRT to do that. So, um, but um, again, if you're using the original hardware, I don't feel like it's a good idea. Would be my point. So, um, I, mean, I mean, is that what you think too, Tim? Yeah, I'm just kind of just not the. They're just not designed, and they won't hold up. Although putting it in the at least original cabinet would solve that issue. You're not going to have everybody just tear that the cabinets. What I would worry about, um, but I don't know. Just something about it just seems wrong. <laughs> right, know? and like I said, I think if it's free. And you're just, like you say, you got them at a dentist office or you got them at a restaurant and they're just set up and people can play them if they want. I think that's fine. I mean, like I said, it's no different than having a video game console out. But if you're um, but if you're charging money for them or you're putting a card swipe on it or it's coin operated, I feel like that's where you start to cross the line a little bit. Because at that point, it's no longer, it's no longer, you're basically changing the intention of what it was intended to be, if that makes sense. So, okay. and again... We're not big on putting emulator-based systems out on route anyway because, I mean, there are legal issues with that. And so, I mean, even if it was a computer with a PC in it, we or even if it was a cabinet with a PC in it, we wouldn't do that any more than we would put, you know, than we would put um, 
put it put a cabinet with the guts of a arcade one up out there, right? Exactly. So, I mean, um, Nate says he's seeing it more and more um, with legit arcade machines, one or two one ups being operated mostly to appeal to younger children and and um, due to the size. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, look, there are people doing it, but I mean, we just it wouldn't be something we would do. I think is the big thing. I mean, if you're asking us what we think. Well. Um, we wouldn't recommend it, and we wouldn't do it ourselves. But there are people out there doing it. But I mean, again, I don't think anybody's going to come after you, copyright wise, Tim. Because I mean, they don't oh, come after right. sixty-one board people. There's a lot of people they don't come after. But just because they don't come after you means it's legal. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I mean, but um, they Bert says a sticker sign on the machine, uh, saying it's a one-up machine. I've seen plenty of modified machines that no longer even look like one-up machines, but still have the guts in them. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, this is, because arcade one-ups are so cheap, um, you know, some arcades are like, hey, well, we can monetize those. But again, it's not our preference for sure. We would rather run on original hardware whenever possible. Again, we're the same people who always try to keep the CRTs running, right, Tim? Exactly. So, I mean, we're the same people who are going to run original hardware whenever possible. Um, and we're going to discourage anybody from using emulator-based systems, regardless of if that's Arcade 1-Up or PCs or anything else. Now, if you're doing it for home use, again, that's different. Um, but if you're doing it in a commercial environment, you need to stick to things that are made for commercial environments, for sure. So, Agreed. that's what it comes down to. Um, okay, so with that out of the way, Tim, let us go ahead and go to just some personal updates. How was your August? Did you have any back to school things going on? Any fall plans coming up? What's what's going on with you uh, last month and going forward? Well, of course, I've still been traveling a lot, and it's just been dangerously hot. Not just griping because it's hot. Literally, you know, you have to be careful being out in the heat and stuff. Um, so, really, haven't uh, Landon got to come home for his birthday? So, got to spend some time with him and his wife. And uh, so it was a good month, but still, um, you know, I, I said I apologize earlier for yawning some. I'm still a little jet lagged and, and just have hit the ground running here. Um, but overall, it's been, been good. It's, I'm just kind of, I've never looked forward to fall so much. I usually love the summer, but it has just been uh, uh, extremely hot, almost unbearable at times where I normally like to grill and do things outside, I just want not want to be outside much at all. I don't even want to go, it's too hot to swim. Yeah. You know, um, you know before before this week, I mean, last week was actually fairly nice. It's about what it was where you are in Wichita. It's about, you know, um, mid-90s, yeah. which mid-90s is hot, but it's bearable. Um, and the water is not super hot like you're talking about, but when it gets into like the 105s, the water is hot even to go swimming, which is really, yeah. really brutal. You can't hardly cool off. Agreed. You know? So, um, it, it, it's pretty rough stuff. And so, I mean, with that in mind, um, it can be pretty rough. But um, you know, hopefully, everybody out there is staying cool. Um, this is Texas this time of year. I mean, every year, man, it's been hot. It's just it is what it is. And actually, I feel like I feel like um, it was cooler longer, like in June and July. But when, once we got to August, man, all bets were off. And now it, the heat. Well, that we haven't had any rain. Oh, we desperately need. Well, we had a little one day. We desperately need some rain. And it, it looks like we have a chance of rain all this week, Tim, going going forward for the next okay. seven days. And so hopefully we're going to get some rain here. That would really help us for sure. Um, but, yeah, so I'm glad that you got to see Landon. That's exciting. Um, obviously, your wife, did she go back to school already, already get into the teaching yep, group and everything? she's already started in full swing. Um, we both enjoyed. We had both had Labor Day weekend off. So it was kind of three days where we did – uh, just kind of get to spend some time together, which was nice, you know. Absolutely. So you got any uh, big plans coming up for the rest of <laughs> September, or are you guys pretty much going anywhere else? I've got a trip coming up to New Jersey, the shore, which I went earlier one time this year. I'm really looking forward to going back to that area. I love that area. It's a great, uh, and hopefully it'll be a little cooler there, but I love the beach area. And so now that school started, it shouldn't be too crowded or bad down there. Remember when I went to the arcade there? It was really neat, so I hope to get to visit that place again. Other than that, um, typical, you know, uh, I'm glad it's football season. We'll talk about football in a minute. I'll just, just, this is, going into fall has become one of my favorite times of the year. 
Yeah, agreed. I mean, I, I, you know, tell I'm not a huge football fan. I'm probably more of a baseball fan, but I still enjoy watching it. I still watch several games, and I'm looking forward to watching some football this week for sure, week one, and uh, obviously big Cowboys fan, and I think we have a good shot this year, so. Yeah. There you go. Nate says it's 19 degrees Celsius there, which sounds really nice, so. Okay. Yeah, um, I forget the conversion, yeah, but. That is pretty nice. Yeah, I was about to say, I think that's, what, 70s? Something yeah, like that. In the so I mean that'd be yeah for Fahrenheit. So I'd have to look it up. I just, you know I, I went to Canada last month. You think I would remember the conversion? But uh, it is right. what it is. So um, as far as like fall plans for us, my wife's going like on a little trip here, and I think this weekend or next weekend, uh, next weekend with some friends. And so it's gonna be me, uh, me and the kids for like four days there. Um, my daughter has started back to her soccer practice and soccer stuff, so we've been doing that on Thursdays and Saturday mornings, and it's hot as you can imagine out there so we always take plenty of water and things um let's see it's 66 degrees john that's perfect oh yeah i was about to say i thought 70 was about right 66 sounds great right now um as far as the rest of fall goes i don't know what else we got going on but uh you know getting ready for halloween already getting halloween costumes and things both the kids are back to school now so we're kind of in the swing of school and everything and uh just i'm doing some house projects around here working on our carport and uh some other things you know just sanding and painting and scraping and all that kind of stuff so um you know oh i forgot to mention last time i did get a a, a new to me car um i have a 2019 jeep compass and it's not it's nothing to oh. write home of, or 20 2021 jeep compass it's nothing to write home about okay. but it was cheap so okay. you know, I, mean, I just needed something cheap low mileage it gets me back and forth to work so um you know and it was but it doesn't pick up very fast. That's nice. It's got leather interior and nice. I mean, it's nice overall. But um, you know, it was cheap and it's got a warranty on it for for a hundred thousand miles. So you know, I'm good. So my uh, rental is a Hyundai Kona. Oh, I know the Kona. And yes, I think that's very similar, uh, probably class of that as your Jeep. So yeah, it's not a bad car. I'm like I said, it's a rental. Yeah. I don't really care. The compass is weird because it's kind of in between like a Kona and what the next size up would be like a CRV. It's almost in a class by yeah. itself, which is why it's kind of overpriced a lot of times for what people pay for it. But I got it used and they're trying to get rid of it, so I feel good. But um, nice. but uh, it's a little bit bigger than a Kona, but not as big as a CRV, if that makes sense. So okay. it'd be kind of in between those. But um, uh, so I said, no Corvette this time. Yeah, nah, I'm sorry, I'm poor. So I told you we don't make money. I mean, you guys, you guys expect us. To, you know, it's like all, all the arcade games I bought, I bought before kids. You know, so I mean that. You know, right. I mean it's like that was B B K. Right, exactly. So I mean, I'm broke now. I got kids to put through school, and I got um, I got car payments and everything else, house payments and everything like that. So you know, no, I, I can't afford a midlife crisis. That's the problem. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into the fall, getting a little bit more cool, working on some projects and things around the house. So yeah, I've, I've been doing repair, not arcade repair. So okay. Yeah. So, but it, yeah, right. it is what it is. So let's talk about investments real quick, Tim. Any investments you made recently? Well, you know that we both kind of jumped ship from um, Robinhood a little over a year ago, probably. But I left the stock that we bought with the ten dollars, yeah. right? And you know what? My Robinhood count must have hit a certain point because it automatically sold. So it, we ended up selling at two dollars and something, I think. And I, I was like, "Well, I guess we're not talking about it anymore." We lost a big uh, eight, ten, eight of the ten dollars we had invested. Uh, we tried to hold on as long as we could, but even Robinhood said, "Hey, it's time to get rid of it." They made me oh, sell it. Oh, there you go. Well, I mean, at least we know what happened. You, you, at one at one time, it had doubled or tripled, right? Yeah, we were we had doubled for sure, and uh, I kind of thought, uh, especially with the current administration and stuff, that it would be up there, but never did. So, um, time to move on. You know, most of my longer term investments, I'm actually doing better on dividend stocks than I am on anything. Agreed. And that's the same thing I've been doing, Tim, is I've been doing a lot of dividend stocks. And I think that's, that's really a good place to put your money. Tim, a good place to put your money is in a freaking savings account right now. I mean, if you can get a savings account that's yielding five or six percent, I mean, golly, you can just park yeah. it there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's it's like you know, no risk. You know what I'm saying? That's the nice thing about that. So, right. um, but let's talk about, let's talk about how politics cost me money. 
<laughs> um, so, as many people know who watch the after show, I am a big investor in Dave and Buster's. Tim, I love Dave and Buster's. Uh-huh. Well, somebody posted on Twitter that they were sponsoring some sort of LGBTQIA plus event in Wisconsin, uh-huh. and so which was not the issue. The issue was the part right. of that event, so, right? So exactly. I, I mean, I think it, they were having like a kids drag show or something like that. I think is what it was. And yeah. Dave and Buster's was listed as a sponsor on this thing. And so all of Twitter went up in uproar saying, Dave and Buster's is awful. Dave and Buster's is terrible. Everybody sell your stock. And on top of that, Tim, they didn't meet the, this fiscal quarter projections. And so oh, right wow. now my yeah, stock is in the toilet. Now, it's still worth more than what I paid for it because remember I got in like super duper 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 early. Okay. But yeah. I've lost I've lost triple digits in money over the last almost almost four digits worth of money over like the last the last month. Wow. So, um, but uh, it, well, and. It might be a good time for to buy. Yeah, exactly. I might just buy in some more. But Dave Busters came out, they released a statement saying, hey, we still support the LGBTQ community, but this event we don't support. We're pulling our sponsorship from the event, which is, I think, a good move on their part. And so that seemed to satisfy the Twitter army of people who were coming after them. Okay. And so, um, and so, but it didn't help that then they announced that they missed their fiscal quarter projections. That doesn't help. (laughs) So, right. All right. So we got like a double whammy on the stock right now. So all that to say, if you want to get in on Dave and Buster's now would be a really good time because it's, it's trading pretty low. Uh, and you can get in at a pretty decent price. I think it's going to go back up. I think the uproar was, I think it was, it was overdone. You know, I mean, it's yeah. like they got in a big, a lot of people got in an uproar about it. But, I mean, they basically squashed it. I thought they did pretty good with their statement. And so I think it appeased most people. Um, and I do think that they're going to they're gonna start hitting their projections. But I say that, I say that, Tim, but it seems like all restaurants are really suffering right now. Yeah, well, you know what? There's a ton of competition out right now, too. And a lot of people are shorthanded. There's still labor crisis. So people aren't getting as great a service. So some people are choosing to hit certain restaurants. Uh, For instance, McDonald's is doing really well because they're still cheap. And everybody else is doubled and tripled in prices. Uh, You know, you can't go to water. For the price, I can go to Whataburger. I can sit down and eat a really good meal somewhere. And, if, you know, I want my fast food to be cheap and inexpensive for what it is. Fast. So, and I so Tim, um, a, a manager of a local restaurant posted in one of the Facebook groups, I don't know if you're part of that, and was asking people, like, all of us restaurant owners have been seeing a trend where people aren't eating out as much. Why do you think that is? And the, the number one answers were service is not as good as it used to be. Ingredients... It are not as good as they used to be. The food is not prepared as good as it used to be. And I agree with all three of these statements. Um, so it seems like you eat somewhere, especially sit-down restaurants, the quality has gone downhill. Um, my wife ordered yeah. some fish at a local place where we like to go eat, and you could tell the fish was overcooked. And I'm like, we paid a right. lot of money for this fish, and it's overcooked. You know, I can cook fish for cheaper and better at home. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to spend all the money if you're not going to prepare it right, you know? Exactly. And so I think a lot of people are in the same boat we are. It's like I can if, – if if I can cook it better at home than what I'm getting quality-wise at restaurants, I'm going to eat at home. And then on top of that, Tim, the service has been suffering. I feel – and it may not be so much that the service is, service is suffering because the people are not as good. It may just be that everywhere is shorthanded or they're all trying to work on low labor cost. And so when you do that, you're stressing out your people and they stop – doing as good of a job just because they're having to juggle like 15 different things right and so that may be part of it as well we though have been making a conscious effort not to eat out as much we are still eating out but i went to mcdonald's and whataburger last night to pick my kids up food and both the drive throughs were empty that wow. never happens no okay so it's not just us that apparently are trying to eat out less i feel like it's everybody and so i don't know if it's a Maybe money so. thing if people are just if things are just tight right now or if it's um, or what it is for me, it's always been a health thing. I just I feel better when I eat at home typically, and if I do eat out, I want to eat out healthy if I can. Um, but for the kids, a lot of times I'll go by and get them something just because it's easy. You know, if they're hungry after school or whatever, we'll get them something for dinner or whatever. But um, right. But the thing about the thing that positions Dave and Buster's differently though is that last time I was in Dave and Buster's, the food costs were fine. 
Like I thought I got a fair amount of food for the for the amount that they gave me. And they can compete okay. better at food costs than other places because they have something that offsets food cost and that's the games. That's the games. And you Correct. and I you, since you worked at Chuck E. Cheese, know the games power what is it, sixty percent of revenue? Yeah, that's a goal, and uh, sometimes we would hit 70% of revenue was gained. Right, alone. so if you can, and there's almost, it's not all margin, but there's a good amount of margin in that, which means that even if yeah. you lose a little bit in food cost, you can make it up in game cost. Yeah, we did that for years. Which is which is why I think Dave & Buster's is uniquely positioned where they are. They can sell their food at a lower price than a similar restaurant that serves a similar type of food because they can offset it with games. It's kind of like the convenience store, right? Like the convenience store model where it's like, okay, well, yes, convenience stores are expensive, but, you know, you don't have to go to the big store, whatever it is. And so, you know, it's, it's like you can do that kind of model where it's like um, because or we can lose money on gas as long as we make it up on food. So it's the same kind of thing. We can make it up on games. We can lose money on food, right? So I, I really think that that's where Dave & Buster's is uniquely set up. And so I'm hoping that Dave & Buster's will be able to kind of weather this storm of, um, of kind of people not eating out as much thanks to the, the fact that they have that diversity between games and food. So That's a good point, yeah. though. So let's see. what uh, Let's see. Um, John says, I agree. I ate at Whataburger today. Um, same kind of food issues, I'm sure. YouTube Punk says, I should have comped you the fish. You know, I mean, I hate asking for comp, Tim. I'm never going to do that. I mean, it was eatable. It was edible. It's not like the fish was edible, but you could tell the outsides of the fish were tough. The outsides of the fish were yeah. overcooked. They cooked it just a hair too long. The inside of the fish was fine, but the outside was well, overcooked. So. Yeah. You're, but will you go back there anytime soon? Probably not. No. See, they. that's why they have to to bring it every day, every order, or people just aren't going to pay that, like you said, for under, you know, if they're going to under deliver, you're not going to choose them. Exactly. I mean, if I'm going to go out and spend the money to go somewhere, I want to get quality. I want service to be good. I want the food to be good. You know, that's all I'm asking for. And it's, I mean, it's not rocket science. And, and here's the thing, Tim, I'm kind of in favor of doing away with tipping. Yeah, really? and going to let's just pay servers a flat rate and not tip people. What do you well, think about that? A good server though can make a lot of money if they're good. right. And I don't mind tipping for really good Me service, either. but I'm like you, I'm already we're over tipped though. Upset. Yeah. It's like everybody's asking oh, yeah. me for a tip. Everybody, you know, right. I can tell Lee. Yeah, they're the person taking your order at the register at the fast food wants a tip and i'm like for what right. you're not bringing it to me you're not cooking it you're just sitting here taking my order that's right. your job or include the gratuity in the check you know what i'm right. saying like just tell me up front look we're gonna put a minimum 10 percent gratuity on there if you want to tip more you can yeah or whatever right. i mean so i mean i i, I i'm just, I, i'm tipped to death it's like just let me know what it is up front or whatever you know so but I mean, that's how they do it in Europe, you know? Right. But, um, oh, Joe says it might be the backlighting, but Tim looks like the kind of guy I don't want to owe money to. Uh -huh. I, I think I think it's the yeah. way you're leaning back like this. Oh, the whole, well, this chair is not super comfortable, and uh, it you, you either are way up, or like I'm close here, or the second you tilt, it goes way back. So, yeah, it's a lot more comfortable leaning back. There you go. <laughs> Uh, let's see. John says, I have to admit that I never, I've never gotten to Dave and Buster's. The closest one is about two and a half hours away. I need to try them. Yeah. Um, that's the same with us. The closest one to us is about two hours away, but it's worth your time. You should go. It's fun. Yeah. The closest one to me is two hours. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, two miles away tonight. So maybe when we wrap up, I'll there go you down go. there. So Dave and Buster's is a great place. And here's the thing. It's for adults more than it is for kids. It's for kids too. That's the cool thing. But it's adult Chuck E. Cheese. And it's fun. Yeah. So I love Dave and Buster's. So um, YouTube Punk says, Amen. Apparently he's feeling me with the tipping, maybe. We are over tipped, definitely. And 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 that's the thing, is like I wouldn't mind it so much. I like when it was just restaurants, it was fine. And I go to Starbucks, Tim, I don't mind throwing a dollar to my barista or whatever. You know, I mean it's I mean it's not right. bad. It's it's when because I know they work, they actually work to mix the drink, right? Like there's work involved. But it's like the, like you said, you're at a quick service counter and the guy wants you know, like he wants money for taking your order. 
You know, it's like, you know, come on now. Like, let's just go to pay servers a flat rate. And, and if I want to tip a little bit more than that, great. But here's the thing I, that sucks, Tim, is that servers get paid nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's all based on tips, right? Exactly. And so, like, let them get paid a decent amount. And if I want to, if I want to throw them a little bit more, I'll throw them a little bit more. You know, up your food cost to cover it, is what I would say. And just, to, you know, so, but there you go. That's just me. But I think, I think, t I think we are getting over tipped, and I kind of, part of me just wants to see tipping go away, and say we're done with it. You know, let's uh, we'll go to the European model where everything's just built in. So. All right. <laughs> But I, I agree. I love giving tips to people who deserve it. I mean, that's fun. So, there you go. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, MLB and NFL talk. So, um, Tim, I refuse to talk Texas Rangers baseball. Uh, so, we Man. suck. Um, no, no it, I'm glad we're not playing tonight because yeah. we would lose. In fact, we may lose tonight to the bye. I don't know. You know, golly, the way we've been playing, I feel... I don't think I would pitch to Altuve. Yeah, anymore. exactly. Just the rest intentionally the walk him. Just walk him every a time. Absolutely. How do you give up four straight home runs to any yeah. player after the third? It was kind of like the Cowboys kicker missed the next right. points. It's like, let's just run it in next time. Just try for a two point conversion. Why embarrass us anymore? You know, somebody brought up a good point about two point conversions here, Tim. If you just went for a two point conversion every time and you got 50% of them, You'd still have, you have the same, same score. score, right? Yeah, that's something I never thought about before, but it's true. Two-point conversion every yeah, time, same true. score. If you give them 50% of the mm -hmm. time. so. But yeah, so um, NFL starts tonight. Is it um, is it Chiefs? The Lions and Yeah, I was about to say Chiefs and Lions tonight. And uh, is Kelsey playing tonight? I uh, think Yeah, I think out. they said he was out. They were, he was kind of... Last I heard, like this morning, they were they didn't know for sure, but I think he, I think I got the update that he's going to be out. So um, that's going to hurt them. Uh, but man, Patrick Patrick Mahomes, we talked about before, homeboy here from East Texas, and so we're always going to root for him, right? Yeah. So. Got a lot of Chiefs fans in East Texas, and of course, I'm right in the middle of big Chiefs country. So wherever I'm going tonight to eat, I'm sure there'll be a lot of Chiefs fans watch there. Watching the Absolutely. game. Uh, Tim, Sunday night game for the Cowboys. I forget who we're playing. Are we playing the Giants? The Giants. Yeah. So, Giants tonight. We always play. Or Sunday night. Yeah, Gi so. Giants Sunday yeah. night. So. Yeah. I, you know, it's just interesting. I really like some of the new players that we got, the, some of the pickups. Um, we definitely should. Um, we should be a better team, and we were good last year. So, um I think we have a, you know, everybody, you go into the season always thinking good, but you never know about injuries and other things. But we seem a little deeper, like especially at running back and stuff than we've ever been. Wide receiver is really deep. Even our secondary and stuff, you know. So some areas where one person got hurt and killed us before, quarterback's always the, the big Yeah, but right. we also picked up that guy um, from San Francisco. I forget. And yeah. so, but, no, I'm worried about offensive line. Yeah, That's the so. one place I feel like we can't afford to lose anybody. So right. offensive line, I feel like, is the place where if we lose somebody there, that could be that could be tough for the season. So, but all the rest of the positions you talked about, completely agree. So we've got backups now that'll really help. So I'm feeling good about the Cowboys. We'll see what happens. So um, and it's a seven to nothing Detroit uh, on top right now is what is what John just gives an update on Tim. Okay. So for those of you guys who are watching us instead of the football game, seven to nothing Detroit. So, uh, Tim, let's go ahead and wrap it up with some movie and TV talk. What uh, movies, TV shows have you been uh, watching? Well, I've only been watching one show because there's a ton of seasons, and I say that I've watched a couple movies and things that nothing really to write home about. But my daughter got me watching a show, and you've probably seen it, John, before. Um, and I have, no, I just was not familiar with this show at all because I don't watch regular TV very often. So once it come out on Hulu, uh, I watched it, and that is, John, what's help me with the name of it is uh, Fresh Off um, the Boat. Fresh Off the Boat. Have, are you familiar with this? I know John? what it is. I have not watched it. How is it? Well, I would say you would love it because it's about a guy who grew up in the '90s. And he was uh, an Asian, a Chinese kid. They lived in D.C. And they moved to Miami. I'm, I'm sorry, they moved to Orlando, 
where he lived in kind of an Asian area, Chinatown, and then he went to Orlando where he's the only Asian person at his school. And But he likes uh, hip-hop and uh, a lot of stuff, so it, that plays into it. And his dad is going to own an American steakhouse. He doesn't want to do Chinese food. He wants to do a steakhouse. And so, and his mom is really kind of quirky and funny, and uh, she's kind of a conspiracy theorist, superstitious person, um, very great characters. His little brother is super funny. You, it, it, every character in that show is like, this is the perfect character for them. And uh, I'm telling you, there are 22-minute episodes. They're really short, but there's like 20 per season, and there's like seven seasons. So it's that show I kind of started watching when, in a filler show, you know, we talked about before, where I'm watching something serious or watching this. I'm like, I need something just funny, makes me laugh. I'm telling you, I literally laugh out loud just about every episode. I think it's one of the best shows that has come out in a long time. Um, and so you definitely would like, would love it, John. Okay, well, I love sitcoms. I know it's a sitcom, and so I may have to... Yeah, it's a Yeah, sitcom. I may have to check it out at some point. I've seen, like, the previews and things for it. I've never really watched it. I'm still going through the middle, Tim. It's kind of like the middle is what we go to every so often when I just need something to be kind of like a palate cleanser. Uh, and there's so many seasons of that that, you know, I think we have two more left or something like that, you know? And, so. and it reminds me of kind of that type of humor... Um, you know, and, and stuff. So if you like the middle, I would say you would definitely like a fresh off the Okay, boat. well, I'll definitely, I will definitely add it to the list and check it out at some point. I do want to do that. Um, and we do have Hulu, which is nice. So uh, anything else, Tim, before we, before I give my spiel? Not much else because I've been kind of, uh, other than football or something, you know, once, and I love college football. So once college football started, I've just been watching football and uh, fresh off the boat. Hey, you see who we're playing this week? Who Texas is playing this week? No, I. Who are I they? I believe it's Alabama. Oh my goodness! Well, that'll be an interesting yeah. game. Um, I, a lot of people in Texas are disappointed because uh, Arch Manning did not even play, even though it was a blowout win and they were doing good. Uh, whereas Oklahoma played every quarterback that they had, even the guy from Tyler got to play, General Booty which is kind of a funny name to say. <laughs> <laughs> Even the announcers like it. When the general booty is coming in, um, what a name, you know. Exactly. Right? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't I don't know. Uh, I think we're ranked. I, we're ranked just outside the top ten, I think. And I think Alabama's three yeah. right now. So, right. it'll be a good game. What about Colorado, huh? That, that's what I was going to bring up. How do you not like... Did you hear Deion Sanders pregame Coach speech? Prime, Tim. Not Deion yeah. Sanders. Coach did, Prime. Did you see his pregame yes, speech? Yes, I did. Man, does that not – everybody says in the chat room I was listening to or whatever on Facebook, they're like, I'm 50 years old. It made me want to suit up and play for him. <laughs> and, and that's kind of how I feel. I see he is proof that there is something to that getting more – out of people and you hear about the guy on defense that played every snap on defense and like three quarters on no offense. i didn't golly he had a hundred yards over a hundred yards receiving and he had like led the team in tackles or something in an in interception he played both ways a hundred and something snaps like a hundred and fifty or sixty snaps that's that crazy game. So if people are talking about you want to talk about a Heisman, you know. Plus his son threw for yeah, five hundred yards. Yeah, that was crazy. I mean, it was just. But it's it's infectious watching him coach and play, and to see. And then I think about you remember when he first took the job, a lot of players yep. left, and he was like, "Let them go. They're not in it. They're not us. They're not the people I want here." And uh, I think he won't have any problem recruiting if he wins. Even if he wins six or seven games this year, I think he probably will. Uh, I would be very – I will, I would want to play him, I can say, tell you that much. Yeah, and then, of course, there were two other upsets that were big in Texas, Tim. We had the Baylor upset and then the Texas Tech upset, right? Yes. Um, the, the, the Baylor upset was really shocking. Um, it's kind of one of those I can't decide is Texas State actually a – a lot better than we give them credit for, or is just Baylor that yeah, bad? Exactly. I don't know. And then um, Texas Tech losing, I think, to Wyoming in like double overtime, right? 
Yeah, that was more evenly matched. Honestly, I I, I didn't. Um, they could have won, should have won the game, but at the same time, I you know, bigger upset would be like Clemson losing, uh, stuff like to uh, who did they lose to, um, Duke. <laughs> you know, it's like wow, they had beat them in like thirty years. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it's a balanced year. I think we're going to see a lot of teams. Uh, Georgia, of course, number one team, and, and rightfully so. Uh, LSU, not as good as they thought right. they were, <laughs> and right, maybe rightfully so. Florida State, maybe a little better uh, than some thought. So I love college football. I think this is going to be a really exciting year. And of course, my team didn't look too shabby. Um, you know, the second string quarterback. Uh, the number one player out of ESP, ESPN, number one ranked player, uh, stepped in and went 11 for 11, uh, just playing in a second string role. That's pretty exciting. You know, when you you worry if your main quarterback went down like last year before Texas right. game and you get stomped, uh, you want to know now you have a couple of backups that can come in and play just in case. Very deep, very deep squad this year. Lots of playmakers. Sounds good. Well, off to college football real quick, Tim. I'll go ahead and give my movie and TV talk real quick. Um, I watched okay. um, No Hard Feelings with Jennifer Lawrence, Tim. Have you seen the previews for that? No. It, yes. I okay, have. it's based on this premise that's a real premise. Now, the movie's made up, but the, the premise was is that this family was giving away a car for somebody to date their son. That okay. is the premise. And so... The um, writer of the movie saw this and basically wrote a whole movie around the concept. But there's Jennifer Lawrence's character, needs money. She's kind of down on her luck. She sees the ad that, you know, if she will date these people's son, that she will get this car for free, basically. And so she wow. she goes okay. to start doing it. And, so, and, and it's hilarious. It's funny. It's very good. I think, you know, I mean, it is kind of crude up front. But it is funny, so if you're looking for something funny to watch, then uh, you should check out No Hard Feelings. I watched Elemental, which is the new Disney movie, um, Pixar Disney movie about the fire and the water guy, the fire girl and the water guy and all that. It was decent. Okay. It was way better than um, than a lot of the Pixar movies have been recently. Way better than Lightyear. Golly, like, I mean, just a million times better. And so um, it was oh, basically, okay. yeah, it's basically an immigrant story. So, you know, if, if um, very similar kind of styling and everything. But um, it was good, and it's, uh, you know, it doesn't have anything really inappropriate for kids in it or anything. So, I mean, it's very kid-friendly, and um, I really enjoyed it, and my daughter really liked it, too. I think it would go over my son's head, though. He, you know, he, he's five, so I think for him it's a little bit too, right. maybe a little bit too high level for him, but my daughter, who's 10, obviously liked it a lot, so... Um, the last episode of season two of The After Party came out last night, Tim, and it was great. The After Party is a great show on Netflix. If you're the kind of person who likes murder mystery style shows, you will love The After Party. So watch it. It's done by Christopher Miller, um, who is part of the Lord Miller team, who's done so many other great um, uh, great writing things like uh, Lego Movie and... Um, and uh, Sp uh, Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse movies and things like that. So um, The After Party, okay. highly recommended. Apple TV Plus if you want to watch that. Watch seasons one and two if you haven't watched them. They're funny. Every so the way they do it is that there's a murder, and every episode is a different person's take on what happened. But every not as only is it their take, but each episode is done a different theming. So it may be a soap opera, or it may be it uh, may be a um, detective noir kind of thing. It may be okay. uh, it may be um, Jane Austen style. Like every person has a different way of telling the story. And so while they're while they're investigating this murder, they interview each person, and each person tells their story kind of in their frame of reference. And it's really good. Um, and highly recommend the After Party on Apple TV. Great show. And if you okay. like Murder Mystery, then you should be watching Only Murders in the Building on Hulu as well. We got season three, and season three has um, uh, has Meryl Streep in it, and then what's his name from Ant Man that I can't think of at the moment. Uh, what? You like this show, don't you? Paul, Paul Rudd. Paul thank Rudd? you. Yes. So yeah. both of them are in it, but even before they were in it, seasons one and two are fantastic. So Only Murders in the Building is really great. If you like Murder Mystery, gotta watch it. So good stuff. Um. I watched BS High on Max, Tim. Do you know what BS High is? Not heard of it. It's about a high school, well, a supposed high school that basically didn't exist and only existed for the purpose of playing football. 
And so these kids who, once they graduate high school, would go to this prep slash high school and they wouldn't learn anything. They'd basically just play football against other kids. And so the whole premise is that he's just a school and he'll play all the hardest teams and then play his kids against them. But, and it's all just to get money. And the guy who runs it's a complete con yeah. artist. Okay. But it's, I think, number two on HBO Max right now or on Max right now for TV shows or documentaries or movies or something like that. You should watch it, Tim. I think you'd really like it. BS okay. High. BS High, okay. So um, watch that, though. Um, speaking of documentaries, Tim, I'm also watching Telemarketers on Max. Do you know what that's about? Well, I'm assuming it's about telemarketers. It is. It's about the telemarketers <laughs> that call you and fundraise fundraise for PACs and for the police and everything and how corrupt they are and it's done by two people who used to work for a corrupt telemarketer it's okay. three episodes and they talk to a whole bunch of people it's amateurish the whole thing is shot like on on a camcorder but it's fascinating because they actually track down a lot of these people and get interviews with people you'd never think they get interviews with and they tell the story yeah, about how these telemarketers work and how Basically, they'll call for this police organization. They'll give the police organization 10%, and the telemarketers will keep 90%. And the, how this racket continues to go on, it's amazing. So if you're interested in that, you should definitely watch telemarketers. Uh, Tim, are you watching the second season of Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty on HBO Max? I have watched a couple of episodes. Um, I think that's where it was a couple weeks ago, but... I haven't watched it in about three weeks. The last weeks. two episodes are great. I know it's a slow build at the beginning, but now we're starting to see we're to the part where um, Pat Riley becomes coach. Oh, I mean, okay. if you know your history, then you already know. Coming, yeah. but, you know, right. you already know what happens. But we're to that part, and it's getting really good now. So you need to pick it back up. I know the first, like, three episodes of the season are super slow. Now it's starting to pick back up. And then the last thing I'm watching, Tim, is Heels on Stars, which is about pro, a pro wrestling organization in Atlanta, Georgia. It's got Stephen Amell in it, who is also in uh, Arrow on the CW. He was um, the Green Arrow on that show. Um, I really like Heels. And, I, in fact, I subscribe to Stars just for Heels. And only oh, when they have okay. a new season do I subscribe to Stars. So, okay. I mean, literally, Stars should know the only reason they're getting my money is for that show. But, it's I mean, it's corny, but I like it. You know, I mean, okay. it's a corny show. I mean, but it's fun. You know, it's like, it's not a serious watch. It's got some drama in there, but the drama is not real. It's not real dramatic, you know. Um, but it's just a, it's just a kind of a nice, relaxing, relaxing, laid back watch for me. So, but uh, good stuff. Heels on Stars. Second season's going on now. Okay. So, uh, I think I'm done, Tim. Anything else we need? No, I'm done, John. I need to get on. I haven't eaten supper yet, and I know it's getting late for even some of our people that have stuck with us throughout this whole night. Um, I'm ready to go. Me too, Tim. And uh, John wants to give us a score update. The score is now 7-7. Seven seven. Oh, interesting. Tie game. I'm going to have to tune in and watch it here in a and minute. And we would encourage you guys all to do the same. And we do want to thank everybody for staying with us for the for the after show this evening uh, and for hanging in there. We had a great live show earlier, Tim, and I thought that was one of our better episodes. And the, this after show has been good as well. And I always enjoy catching up with you. I know it's been a while since we've actually been in the same room. Hopefully we can rectify that coming up next month. So, so Well, safe travels, my friend. Uh, hopefully Wichita will treat you well for the rest of the night. Go get some food at Dave & Buster's and help my stock out. And we'll <laughs> see you next month, as well as everybody in the live chat as well. We hope that you guys will all tune back in in October, Tim. And I don't even know what day that's going to be. If I look at my calendar, I can tell you. And that will be the 5th. The October 5th? the 5th. Yeah. So be back here for our Halloween episode on October 5th. And until then, take care. Have a great month. God bless you. We'll see you soon. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, guys.